Hello, I see you there. <laughs> Yes, it is I, God. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Though I am a god, but not the god. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. Daisha Hao. Woo. So, we are going to be playing Hakuoki Edo Blossoms. Last time, um, we kind of did not succeed on keeping Saito away from going crazy because he drank the water of life, which turned him into a fury. So, uh, the first time we were given the option to give him medicine, give him our blood, or just let him, like, do whatever the heck he wanted to do. And the first run through, we did medicine, or not medicine, um, we let him drink our blood. And then the second time when it popped up, I just didn't do anything with him. And, um, he killed me. <laughs> so, he, he yeah, he went insane and killed me, and so we had to do that all over again, and so I gave him medicine the first time, and then had him drink our blood the second time. So, let's see what happens this time. Hello! Hello, hello! <laughs> so, let's, let's, uh, let's see what happens this time. Hopefully, nothing bad happens. Oh, I'm not on my game. There we go. Now I'm on my game. So, hopefully we can keep Saito in check, and I can figure out what I need to do. Because <laughs> if I have to look up a guide at some point to figure out, like, what specific order I need to, like, give him stuff... Oy, you know that's bad. Okay. Let's pull back the keyboard, get all nice and comfy. Let's go. After an arduous walk, Saito and I returned from Kofu. It was decided that we were to remain on standby at the Edo uh, Hatamo ha Hatamoto's mansion, which still served as our headquarters while we regathered our men. Nagakura and Harada had safely returned to Edo shortly after we did, but Kondo and Toshi, on the other hand, took far longer to return to the headquarters. Both Nagakura and Harada had their fair share of criticisms of Kondo for a while, so it left a better taste in their mouths when neither leader had returned. During one brisk morning... We've gotta love games making you walk- Yeah, I feel like that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I really hope I don't have to walk a tightrope on keeping Saito sane and staying alive at the same time. Um, are you two really leaving? Also, let me know if the audio and everything is good. Because I'm, I'm still worried about that one time when the audio wasn't working for like a good while. <laughs> no, don't leave me, Harada. Is there any way you could speak with Kondo and perhaps reach compromise? Oh dang. Ooh, dang. Rules of conduct. Shinsengumi regulations that were to be strictly obeyed as the penalty for disobedience was honorable suicide. It was also referred to as the code. Yeah, I actually read up a little bit more on the Shinsengumi, and um, th their code was not a joke. <laughs> Surprisingly, Harada and Nagakura found time to be their usual joking selves. It was difficult to accept that this could be the last moment all of us would share together. Um... 
May I ask why you guys are leaving the Shinsengumi? Nagakura, uh, what the heck is that word? Impetuously? I don't know that word. Scratched at his nose with his fingers. They just don't want to be under uh, Kondo's control anymore because Kondo, um, kind of messed up. Understandable. He is that kind of guy. A lie? For a moment, Nagakura was deep in thought. It seemed as though he had settled on an answer, but he was choosing his words very carefully. Ooh, makes me wonder what he wanted to be. Hi hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Okay, I wonder what he means by that. <gasps> Saito! Saito instantly perked up. Although his actual expression change was relatively unnoticeable, perhaps something that Nagakura had said struck a nerve with him. Do you feel the same way, Harada? やめてくれよ。現実費用のためだけに脱藩して安定した暮らしを捨てたバカと一緒くたにされちゃ、俺がかわいそうだろ。You <笑> jerk. <笑> uh, the conscious choice to disaffiliate with a family or feudal retainer, thus severing ties between a warrior and his support network. That's totally a jab to freaking Nagakura right there. うるせえぞ、その。Nagakura sniped back angrily, but Harada smirked as he whispered his response to me quietly. Yep, same. I was liking Kondo because he was like the the himbo, like the silly himbo, but now he's kind of like becoming a proper jerk. It hurts? Yeah, something like that can be too much at some point. Outlaw Ronin, Ronin who carry neither affiliation nor purpose, often forming into gangs who perform illicit activities. Dot dot dot. Each time either man expressed his candid reflection about Kondo, or the way things used to be, it reminded me of just how it... What the heck? If... If fear... Fermiel? Man, they're just popping out all these new words on me, I don't know these. <laughs> Each of those moments were, and how impossible it was to reclaim them as they used to be. Heck yeah. Okay. On the outside, I agreed with what they said, but on the inside, I knew I couldn't quite believe it. The tables had turned, the Shogunite had dissolved, and the Satsuma and Choshu domains, who only recently were considered traitors, now compromised the Imperial Army. Choshu Domain, a domain governed by Takachika Mori, an opposition daimo. Most members of the domain were imperialists during the early part of the Bakumatsu period and later attempted more directly to overthrow the Shogunite. And we'll look at those other two terms later. <laughs> What would later become of all of this? 
however, was something none of us had ever anticipated. Game writers grab with yeah, mm-hmm. They're like, okay, we're creating a visual novel. Take out the Thoris, take out the dictionary. Let's put out these fancy words. <laughs> Let's make sure they don't know what's going on. Please wait. Uh, allow me to escort you out. That's the point. I don't want you to leave. <laughs> that kind of makes me wonder if you were going for Harada or and or Nagakura, like I wonder how this route would go. Would only one of them leave? I wonder. Hmm. That's something to find out later. Saito spoke quite firmly, and together we walked both of the men towards the front gate. That took me a moment. For some weird reason, I couldn't process what was being written right there. As we exited the building, we found Soma and Nomura standing idly to share their salutations. Oh. <laughs> Babies. Oh, that's an interesting note. Yeah, it is. Also, I keep forgetting to look up Soma's voice actor. <laughs> Every single time I, I start this game, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to remember to look up his voice actor after the stream. And then after the stream happens and it totally whoosh, right over my head, I forget. I, here, some, can, can one of you look up uh, Kazue Soma's voice actor and see if I'm right on him being Aaron Yeager's voice actor? Because I, I know I'm going to forget. <laughs> Could someone look that up for me, please? Soma, <laughs> <laughs> You got me? Thank you. <laughs> well, please look after yourselves. Bye bye. Harada took one step in an attempt to leave, but Nagakura, however, was frozen and he turned around. He marched up to Saito silently. Saito, by my side? Yes, he is. His whole his whole life plan is to stay by my side forever. Mm-hmm. Duty as a warrior, duty as a husband. <laughs> Nagakura seemed dissatisfied with Saito's answer. He took a breath as if he were about to refute Saito's answer, but instead let out a heavy sigh. With a crooked expression, Nagakura seemed to deliberate to himself, hoping to find something meaningful to say. Then, after a brief pause, he gazed solemnly at Saito. Those are fine words to say to him. Naga Nagakura, you did good. That that was a good... I think that is the smartest thing he's ever said. Confirmed Aaron Yeager. Okay, good. Woo! Okay, so I wasn't crazy when I thought it was him. Okay, yes. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll give him plenty of chances. He already has his wife. No need to pick it. おい、おい、Bye-bye. Sayonara. All right, then. Farewell. With that, Nagakura and Harada waved their goodbyes, leaving the compounds without a second look. 
Soma and Nomura were locked in the moment, quietly watching them depart until Soma broke the silence. He's so cute. He's so cute. I love him. Oh, okay. I'll see you guys later. The two bowed, and they sauntered back into the compounds. Um, Saito, do you think we should head back inside too? I meekly called out to Saito, but he seemed fixed to the spot, immovable as stone, and he had no immediate answer for my question. Instead, he stared somberly in the direction where his old friends had just left, stuck in the inevitable realization that this could be a permanent departure. Perhaps it would have been best for me to leave him be. I decided to head back in so that Saito could be alone. <laughs> mm, poor baby. His tone was far more melancholy than that to which I had become accustomed. Oh, baby. He's sad. I'd be sad too, because those guys are like the funny guys. They're the good funny guys. Later that night, a surprise awaited us. Kondo and Toshi, who had been conspicuously absent for some time, had finally returned to us. <laughs> Toshi, what the heck? Yeah, poor thing. Poor Saito. Saito's going through a lot. <laughs> A significant amount of time had passed since Kondo had last visited our headquarters, and since his last visit, his mood was far more glum. Yeah, that's because he started doing a whole bunch of jerky thingies, and, you know, that doesn't bode well for, you know, the people you work with. <laughs> Come to think of it, Nagakura mentioned that their last conversation resulted in a near alter altercation. If I had to guess, perhaps Kondo was still processing some of those sour feelings. A meeting was called for all of the men, but the only ones present were Kondo, Toshi, Saito, Sanan, and Toro. Perhaps it was my habit of becoming rather sentimental whenever given the opportunity, but watching each of our men decrease one by one was a bleak reminder of what was at stake for us. Saito, well, let me tell you, uh, we almost lost Saito and you almost lost me. <laughs> yep, our enemies apparently were using Furies because we found out last stream that um our father is a demon or at least part demon or something. Like, and he's gone crazy and he wants us to become, you know... Kazuma's bride, and that's not something I want. はい。しかもただの羅刹ではなく、日の光の下でも戦える様子でした。日の光のもとで。うんうん、that's I mean, that's something hard to guesstimate cuz they were fighting in sunlight. I got some green tea off to the side. Saito glanced over at Toshi as if he were unsure if he could confirm the answer to Sanan's pressing questions. Yeah, let my man speak. Sanan's brow... Every single time I see brow, I want to say brows. Brow furrowed sheepishly... Sheepish... Oh my... Sheepishly. That's a hard one. And he fidgeted nervous. Oh my goodness, I cannot speak tonight. Oh, the sentence, I hate it. Sanan's brow furrowed sheepishly, and he fidgeted nervously with his glasses to deflect the attention. Oh my goodness. Can any of you guys say that normally? Because I feel like that's like a tongue twister. <laughs> The demons themselves. 
that and also they have the doctor. At first, Saito seemed to hesitate, taking a quick gulp before looking in my direction. I nodded curtly. Then, Saito continued with his report. そして行動さんが作り出したものの <laughs> Now that was some good voice acting right there. <laughs> the little... <laughs> was perfect. Toshi tapped his fingertips irritably on the tatami. Ta tatami? Tatami. There was something that bothered me more than what Saito was describing, however. Within this room were six people, including myself. However, the only ones speaking were Saito and Toshi. Kondo only mustered powerless sighs. And Sanan? Oh no, he's going into crazy mad scientist mode. Sanan stared at the floor, muttering to himself. It was an incredible thought to be sure, and Sanan was flabbergasted as he wrapped himself in Saito's words. Toto, who was seated right beside Sanan, was glaring at the man sitting next to him with a stern expression. He looks so cute and so baby in that, like, picture right there. So cute. I don't know. I, I still don't know how I feel about him with and without a ponytail. Between the departure of Nagakura and Harada, and Kondo's lack of pronounced dir direction... It meant that the burden of responsibility fell heavier than ever on the shoulders of the men in this room. One of our other stalwart leaders, Okita, was being treated for a terrible bout of tuberculosis, meaning that he was sadly unable to help us in these trying times. Love the pouty face. Yeah, that was a cute pouty face. Also, uh, Soji Okita, captain of the Shinsengumi's first division. After returning to Edo, he is diagnosed with tuberculosis and becomes bedridden. It, it makes me wonder, what would have happened if we went for Okita? Like, would he still... No, because it... If I'm going off of what happens at the end of uh, Kyoto Wins, whoever we romanced would have drank the Water of Life. So if we were romancing Okita, he would have drank the Water of Life. So I think he would be fine in this situation if we were going for him. So he wouldn't be bedridden. Dang, so he's bedridden in every other person's routes. Dang, I don't like that. I want Okita to get better. <laughs> Which left Saito with a larger role to help steer this increasingly bereft Shinsengumi into a positive direction. However, he was struggling with his own afflictions, having been forced to consume the water of life. Just from looking at him, I knew that his bloodlust was only going to become more intense as time went on. Bloodlust, a term used in reference to the ravenous thirst for blood that one develops after becoming a fury. If not fulfilled, the body undergoes an agonizing fit of pain. Yeah, we, uh, we experienced that last stream. <laughs> Even so, his work ethic was unbreakable, something I admired deeply about him. Considering what predicaments the Shinsengumi had to face, I could not bear to tell him what he deserved- er, I could not bear to tell him that he deserved rest. That actually happened to me at work. I was trying to leave a little bit early, but then I got caught. And they were like, hey, yo, do you want to do this? You don't have to if you don't want to. And I was like, yeah, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> All I could do in the meantime was patiently observe Saito's gradual, unpleasant decline. Poor Saito. I wish he didn't have to go through this. We awoke the next day to a bright, placid morning sky. Out of the blue, Toshi summoned everyone for a meeting, projecting his voice loudly to all of his men. Uh, 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 
our time's up? What, what do you mean? We just got to Edo. Aizu Domain, clan related by blood to the Tokugawa clan, and were put in charge of the office of the Kyoto Military Commissioner. They supported the Shinsengumi in Kyoto. Heck yeah! That's a lot of terms. <laughs> then shoot company, an elite force trained in Western tactics by French military instructors. And then we'll find out the other ones later. <laughs> Toshi called out to Kondo, who had been moping with his head held low off to the side, but no answer. In fact, it seemed as though Toshi's spirited, decla yeah, spirited declaration was practically falling on deaf ears. Once more, Toshi called out to Kondo, who finally looked up after festering in his wistful mood. His response, however, was... Mm? Nah. What's up, Kondo? What the heck? What is up with you? Kondo's delivery was half-hearted at best. He was wallowed in his forlorn expressions, aiming his dejected murmurs towards Toshi, although they could have been for anyone, given how detached they felt. Yeah, like, we're talking about, like, the fact that the whole entire, you know, Shinsengumi needs to leave Edo or do something. And he's like, uh, 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 oh, yeah. He is definitely not thinking about the Shinsengumi anymore. I have a feeling Kondo is going to turn on us. Toshi did his best to comfort Kondo, who seemed to sink deeper and deeper into his depression. But it was a futile effort. Hmm. A city located northeast of Edo, who grew prosperous through their use of travel channels along Edo River and its many canals. It is also known for its uh, mirin, a sweet cooking wine. Interesting. Also, this boy Toto is so soft-spoken now, I don't know how to feel about that. I miss his, like, happy perkiness. <laughs> Saito, who had been observe observing us wordlessly from the corner, suddenly spoke up. Sendagayam? Sentagaya? Yeah, a clinic, a clinic located near Edo in which uh, Soji Okita received medical treatment of his uh, respiratory illness on the orders of Dr. Ryojun Matsumoto. Oh, so many, so many words. But. No, not the baby. Oh, that's sad. After Toshi revealed the bad news, Saito politely answered with his usual stoic tone. But even so, it was plain to see that Saito was disappointed. Both he and Okita had worked alongside each other, as friends, no less, since the Shi- 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 Hall days. That is- that is so hard. 
I was confident that Saito would have felt far more comfortable fighting alongside his old comrade. Just then... That is very much how it's feeling, actually. Sanan's demeanor was plaintive. Yeah, was plaintive as ever. But his icy joke was enough to stop everyone in the room. Yeah, that's not much of a joke when it's uh, sadly true. <laughs> <gasps> Dang, Sanan's coming back with a fight. Dang, he's so invested in that. <laughs> Joke that hits a little too hard. Yeah. Uh, way too hard. <laughs> a fiery contemption burned in Toshi's eyes as he shot Sanan a stern look in response to his implicit question. But Sanan maintained his cold composure, seemingly unfazed by Toshi's hateful ire. Ire? Ire. Yeah, twas totally a joke. Excuse me, Sanan? The frick! Yeah. Things were left unsettled as the meeting was disbanded, but Sanan, but, but was Sanan truly joking? Was his question just an attempt to mess with Toshi, or was this poss a possibility he had silently entertained? These thoughts were stifled, stiff, oh my goodness. <sighs> I need a drink. I need a drink of my tea. <laughs> These thoughts were stifed back and forth in my head, well into the night's end. There we go, I read it that time. <laughs> as soon as Toshi gave the official order to depart from Aizu, the headquarters became a buzz with activity. However, being shorthanded as far as leadership figures were concerned meant that we were stretched quite thin with delegating important tasks. One captain, in particular, felt the burden of it all. Saito, is everything okay? There's practically no color in your face. It's okay, Lee. English is hard. Yeah, English is hard. <laughs> English is difficult, man. Why don't you take a... Oh my goodness. Why don't you take a moment to rest? I know that you were working pretty late into the night yesterday evening. But take a rest, my good man. At least sit down for a moment, please. Saito's face was a pale, s sunken mess, so gaunt I was certain he was about to pass out from exhaustion. But don't you think that you collapsing would defeat the purpose of all the effort you're putting in? I think at the very least you could find some time to rest during the daytime if you insist on staying up late. <laughs> Oh man, Saito, you hard worker. Come on. That's not the point. Saito hadn't changed. He was so unbelievably stubborn when it came to practicing self-care. The fact of the matter is, whether or not he was able to work beyond human capabilities was irrelevant. What was relevant was that Saito was made to suffer this painful affliction, and he simply endured it. I was beginning to ask myself if Saito had fallen under the delusion that his mind was, an, was, as irre, was as replaceable as his sword or his armor. I pursed my lips and thought as I stared at him. Oh uh huh? Don't nothing me. 
Saito cut himself short, falling conspicuously silent. Conspicuous to him. Those urshes, I swear, conspicuously silent. Just then? <laughs> no! He let out a distressed groan. Then Saito began to sway where he stood. <gasps> Baby, no! Saito, are you okay? I hastily rushed to his side, supporting what was becoming dead weight as I frantically called to him. Saito's full, subtle lips were becoming pale, and his breathing became ragged as he gasped for air. Are you okay? Just hold on! I told you that you needed to rest! Yeah, oh no indeed. He offered his frail hand, hoping to use my body as leverage to lift himself back to his feet. But he became powerless, and neither his legs nor his arms had any strength in them enough to move. Don't strain yourself. Why don't you give yourself a moment to lie down? I'll prepare your bedding in the next room. Saito shook his head. <laughs> Baby, no! As always, Saito was adamant about declining. All I'd wanted was for him to rest, but alas, there was no convincing him. His affliction, however, did not wait for him to decide. <laughs> Baby! Ah, what do we do this time? After a brilliant flash, Saito's hair turned white. <laughs> My inclination turned out to be true. Saito was transforming into a fury. From what I remember, his fatigue and stress would slowly melt away were he able to drink blood. I... Oh man, what should we do this time? So the first time we gave him medicine. Second time we gave him blood. Ugh... Rick, I, I kind of want to make him endure it. I, I, cause I, I feel like we're not gonna do anything like extraneous. Uh, I, I'm gonna say real quick, <laughs> cause uh, if I mess up, I'll at least, uh, I, I, I at least won't have to go back through all of that dialogue, and I could just pop right back here. But oh my goodness, um, I don't want to give him too much of our blood. I feel like if we do that, he's just gonna go crazy even faster uh the medicine we were told would wear off def wear off after a little bit so i don't want to give him a second dose uh i don't want to make him endure it though frick <sighs> last time we gave him blood and we thought everything would be okay so i feel like even though I think let's give him blood it was a bit of a gamble to be sure to try this op option in hopes of improving his physical condition but this was all I could do for him Saito please drink my blood as my command fell onto his ears Saito's shoulders twitched the Shinsengumi's not in the best shape right now right that means we need you more than ever Saito pressed himself against me as his breathing became a labored wheeze. Without a second thought, I unsheathed my kodachi and I sliced a tiny cut into my earlobe. Small, hot droplets of blood came oozing out. Everything will be okay. When you drink blood, or yeah, when you, yeah, <laughs> when you drink blood, I'm sure you will feel better in no time. I calmly wrapped my arms around Saito's body and I nuzzled my bleeding earlobe against his soft, soft lips. I don't know why I was going to say subtle or subtle, sub, sub, subtle. You get what I mean. Jeez, Holmes. <laughs> this, this picture. This picture, though. <laughs> his tongue was gentle but eager, and I felt a chill run down my neck as his mouth wrapped around my cut. His ragged breath tickled my ears. Without saying a word, Saito sipped the blood. The frequency of his warm, staggered breathing be began to slow itself. 
This alone made me feel relief. Just being able to ease Saito's suffering, even if it were just a little. As I sighed in relief, I had sensed that something was amiss. Oh no, did we pick the wrong option already? <laughs> the cut I just made had already healed. And yet, Saito's lips and tongue were still suckling gently at, oh, at my ear. <gasps> Saito? Um, Saito, I think the cut's already closed up. Saito! <laughs> um, Saito! No. Excuse me? <laughs> After I timidly expressed my observations, Saito's fingertips, which had only moments earlier stroked my hair, twitched awkwardly. Uh, yeah! Oh, was that an not enough blood? Uh, do you want me to make another cut? Once again, I asked him. Well, Ah? What, what happened? Saito hurriedly got to his feet with such a plop. What the heck? Whatever that word is. And it felt as though he were pushing me away. W what's the matter? <laughs> Sheesh, indeed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> he was getting into it. <laughs> he was getting into it. <laughs> now he's embarrassed. <laughs> he was like, okay, fine, I'll drink your blood. And then the cut healed. And then he was like, I'm kind of into this. <laughs> and then we told him, and he's like, oh, frick, I got caught. Saito stood impetuously, and for some reason, he looked shaken. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he just got caught. <laughs> what would you like me to do? Uh, should I cut my ear again? It was the fact that you were getting into it. You want? He totally wanted to go for the lips. Really? Just tell me, if it wasn't enough for you, you don't have to hesitate to ask, okay? Oh. <laughs> don't be afraid to ask, Saito. Please, don't be afraid to ask, even if it's late at night. Don't be afraid to ask, eyebrow wiggle. <laughs> oh my goodness. What had gotten into him? Um, a lot. A lot got into him. <laughs> Just then, his mood had shifted completely. However, color had filled out his complexion again, so maybe I don't have to worry. Can we all agree that he totally was, uh, you know... April, 1868. Edel Blossom's getting steamy up in here. Yeah, it's getting extremely steamy. Um, do I have to worry? <laughs> I don't think I have to worry about anything, but like... It's, uh, it's getting pretty hot in here. April 1st. Our group had been transferred to, uh, to a sake brewery situated in, in the Na Nakaoka mansion in, oh my goodness, Nagare, uh, Nagareyama. Nagaoka Mansion. Oh, Jesus. A mansion famous for its home brewed sake and soy sauce recipes located within the city of Nagareyama. See, it takes me a couple of times to say it for me to actually say it properly. <laughs> Saito was occupied with the bustling scene, ordering warriors around and helping with the unpacking. Saito, how are you feeling? Who, who, who is to say that was a mistake? Are you sure? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Saito, I don't know how to tell you this, but you aren't the best at taking care of your body. So I'm a little worried that you may push yourself too hard again, and that you could faint again.
Then why don't you ask Somura and Nomura? Bruh, take a rest. I understand where you're coming from, Saito, but you must find time to rest, or you won't be able to work as hard as you want to. And if that were to happen, then it would be in an even then it would be an even heavier burden on Kondo and Toshi. Perhaps I was being a tad too forward with my argument, but if I hadn't been so forceful or forward, I doubt that Saito would have paid my words any heed. <laughs> I don't know why, but I took that a little bit um, too, too much, especially since he's smiling with him saying, you're being unexpectedly stubborn today. It's like, why are you smiling at me and saying that to me? Because <laughs> I love you. Duh. Well, how should I respond? It's for the. I don't. No, none of these. None of these are true. I don't want to pick either of these. Is there a third option that says because I love you? <laughs> uh, let's save again. Just to be safe. Because I, since he's so headstrong about the Shinsengumi and everything, I feel like that might be the right answer. But at the same time, I want him to separate himself from the Shinsengumi and, you know, do rest. So having a reason is, I don't know. I'll just say I don't have a reason. I don't have a reason. I'm just really worried about you, Saito. After all, my father was a doctor. <laughs> Well, it's you that I'm worried about more than anyone else at the moment. And it's because you keep pushing yourself and making all of us worry about you. Ever since you became a fury, you've been working day and night. Anyone can see that it has been wearing you down, but you keep insisting you're fine. I think you're only worrying everyone around you more than you think. Saito took in my words carefully, and he cast his gaze towards the ground. Yes! Sorry. You know I'm right, Saito. You know I'm right. Yes, we got a point! Oh, yes! Yeah, you better apologize. I'm your future wife. <gasps> he actually listened to us! W wait a minute. You aren't going to rest now? True. True. I'm definitely also that person that has to do everything in one sitting or else it's never going to get done. <laughs> Hearing that, he was refusing, or hearing that he was refusing yet again to rest almost made me lose all of the power in my body. I thought I could faint at any moment. Um, don't furies normally feel better when they rest during the day and act during the nighttime? So, wouldn't you think it's better if you rest now and then continue to work when the sun's down? <laughs> It's as close as we can get. At this rate, it seemed there would be no convincing him to sleep until the evening. Rather, I had a suspicion that he would sneak around and work until the sun rose once more. Mm, maybe. I, I feel like he would actually take our rest talk to heart, and I think he would actually rest. So... I marched up to his desk, and I gathered all the parchment and documents that he had been working on. Fine then. Have it your way. I'm gonna ask Kondo to write all of these documents. Nani? Yeah, Nani! Shh. 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 I put my finger to his lips on my screen. Enough, Saito. You, you've worked way too hard. <laughs> Kondo needs to deal with his own things. 
It's not like that at all. Kondo has also expressed concern about your well-being. If I tell him that it's time for Saito to t or if I tell him that it's time for Saito to take a break, then I'm sure that he will understand and carry on whatever needs to be done. Shh. Shh. Saito. No. Let Kondo do it. He got himself into this mess. Let him deal with his own things. Oh, no, I didn't want to skip read. <laughs> he took care of the meaningless things before. He was the political dude. No! <laughs> no! You promised me that you'd rest today. A warrior does not go back on his promises, right? Just right. So shush, Saito, shush. <laughs> At last, Saito had no witty refu ref ref refutation to offer. He sighed heavily and his shoulders dropped in defeat. That's right! Nope. I did not one bit. Thank you. Thank you, Saito. Thank you. <laughs> the MC sometimes has the same dialogue I do. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna make your bed immediately. I darted out of the room, preparing Saito's bed before he had a chance to change his mind. That's right. You're gonna rest in this bed, right here, right now. Until you fall asleep. <laughs> Gosh dang, I should wait on my retorts until after the MC dialogue pops up. <laughs> until you rest? I'm afraid that the moment I leave your room, you're going to get right back up and continue working. <laughs> it's like sending a kid off to bed. It's like, but I want to play. No. No. You need a rest. Go to bed. Yeah, and I'm going to make sure that you're going to properly go into bed. And if I have to read you a bedtime story or, or say a poem to you, then I will. If it'll make you rest. Maybe you should rest with him so he'll stay. Oh, heck yeah. I hope that's what happens. <laughs> That'd be nice. Also, I do trust him, but at the same time, I want me to rest. I'm sorry. It's just that I'm... Yeah, it's just that I'm that worried about you. Ooh, do you hear that music? Do you hear that music in the background? That's some spicy music right there. Okay, back down it goes. <laughs> oh shoot, I didn't read that. Uh, every single time I click back onto the game, it instantly goes to the next one. I apologize, I don't even know what I said. I could see a smirk begin to form in the curl of his pink lips. Saito plopped atop the futon, and he lifted the duvet over his body, letting his legs bury underneath them. Oh? As I watched him ready himself for sleep, something familiar came to mind. Oh, nothing. I was just reminded of something. Oh, shoot. He was still talking. My apologies. It was a dream I had. <gasps> oh my goodness. Is the MC gonna talk about that one that one scene when uh when we got a fever and Saito came even though he was supposedly away and he came and took care of us? Is that the dream? It is! It is! <laughs> oh goodness, what's Saito gonna say about this, I wonder? A few years ago, I came down with a terrible cold and was bedridden. But in my dream, you held my hand. <gasps> He's blushing! It was real! <laughs> it was real? <laughs> <laughs> He's blushing because he's like, I, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I totally didn't come to the headquarters, even though 
everybody told me that they would kill me on sight if they saw me but i totally came to the headquarters for you i mean i totally didn't come to the headquarters for you because you were cold or you had a cold totally nah not at all <laughs> freaking saito i love him is something wrong saito your face is flushed red Wait, what? Don't tell me. Saito's eyes were hastily averted from my own. <laughs> he did. I love this man. I love this man to death. He literally, he literally left his spy mission and everything to come and make sure we were okay. I love this man. Yes, I know that. I just wanted to say, I'm glad it wasn't a dream. Yes, I'm glad. You have no idea how much it meant when you held my hand that night, Saito. <laughs> Definite husband material. Oh, I love this man. He needs, he definitely needs, like, a wife that is like, yo, you need to rest. Like, th what just happened before, like, what we're currently trying to deal with being like, yo, you need to rest and literally take things from him to make him rest. He needs that kind of wife. That's what we are going to be. That's what we are. Of this boy. Saito's body, Saito's body shrunk as I spoke, perhaps as a show of discomfort. Um, Saito? I love you. <gasps> May I hold your hand? I don't care if you say that. I want to hold your hand, gosh dang it. Hey, I am not trying to treat you like a kid. But when your hand embraced mine all those nights ago, I felt so at peace. So I was hoping I could return the favor and make you feel some ease of calm as well. Is that not okay with you? <laughs> he said our name. A calculated look was aimed towards me by Saito, as if he were hoping to read my motives. <laughs> He moved his gaze awkwardly away from me, but his hand was outstretched in my direction. Bangs fist on table. Let us hold your hand. Yeah. Let us hold your hand. But look, look at what he's doing. He, he He's like doing the like shy little like look away, blushing, hold out hand, not look. I love this man. I love him. I will grasp it, hold it close to my mouth, kiss his hand and just... Mm. I smiled, grasping his hand gently just as he did mine on that distinct wintry night, or er, that distant wintry night. Having the two of us here together really brings back the memories, doesn't it? Well, maybe not exactly, as I suppose you and I have swapped places. So he clasped it onto my hand in return, but I noticed he seemed distracted. Like something was pulling his heart somewhere miles away from here. Oh, come. He ruined the mood. He ruined it. Oh, my God. He ruined it. He just ruined the freaking mood. Uh, 
Susumu Yamazaki, a Shinsengumi officer and spy, better known for his work as a member of the Watch. Following his death at the Battle of Tobofushimi, he was given a burial at sea during the Shinsengumi's return to Edo. Wait, he... Excuse me, what? I thought it was the other dude that died. I thought, I thought we saw him earlier. Excuse me? But, but he's a romance option. Ex excuse me, what? Okay, it, I'm I'm not crazy, am I? I, I could have sworn that we saw him. Like, in Edo Blossoms. Did we not? And I don't remember him dying at the battle. I got, I could have sworn the other guy died. The, the, the bigger, uh, more muscly dude. Wait. <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was the older guy that died, that died. Then, <laughs> I, I'm so thoroughly confused. Yes. Memories of Kyoto came flooding back to me, leaving a bittersweet taste in my mouth as I recounted them. Back then, there were still plenty of challenges that everyone faced, but even so, we faced them together, and we thrived. But now... <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> what? わらず俺の後ろをついてきてね。もうやあ。何かあるとすぐに俺の名を呼ぶ。それだけは昔も今も変わらない。ああ、ああ、まあ、いい。あ、いいや。Come <laughs> Made me smile. <laughs> Excuse me, good sir, but it'll last forever. I will make sure of it. What binds me to you is love. No. I will always remain by everyone's side. Besides, I have nowhere else to call home. I realized that, with Father becoming an agent of the demons, there really is nowhere else I can go. My heart sank heavily in my chest, thinking about how what I'd re regarded as family for so long was now just a ghost of a thought. So here was where I'd belong, next to Saito's side. <laughs> Saito scanned me with it inquisitive eyes, Perhaps on the cusp of, cusp of saying something in response. Then, after a long pause, he opened his mouth. No, you have some place to go right next to my side. I, I'm by your side and you're by my side. We are, we are together. We, we have a place to be and it is together. Please and thank you. <laughs> His words weren't necessarily directed at me, but rather, he was murmuring under his breath. Boy, I swear. We had such a touching moment and then he had to mention all the people from beforehand, I swear. We could have gotten more than just a handhold. A handful of days passed since we moved to the Nagaoka mansion in Nagareyama. All of the men stationed here were supposedly participating in a training exercise today. I wasn't able to learn what exactly the exercise entailed, but from what I could gather, it was a drill to practice using some of the new western artillery and battle techniques as adopted by our enemies. Since we had arrived here, however, I noticed that Kondo was absent, slumping further and further into depressive malice, malice as the days went on. Sanon, too, was nowhere to be seen, as I learned he was becoming more active during the moonlight hours. I was sure that those observate- er, <clears throat> I was sure that these observations were simply because of the concert... Concerted effort? That... okay. 
to gal oh my goodness galvanize the troops into defeating the Satsuma Chosu, but would you like some tea, Saito? Eh, true, but I kind of want to give you tea first. But I already brought him some. I don't want you to keep working so... I don't want you to keep working so much. I think if you sprinkle in some breaks from time to time, you'll be able to work more efficiently. I quietly placed a, placed a cup of tea onto his desk. Drink it. I'm going to... I'm going to continue looking at you until you drink it. Saito glanced at the cup from the corner of his eye, and he spoke in a low tone. Mm, well, earlier when I saw him, it seemed like he was reading a book. His answer came curtly, and Saito's line of sight dropped to the ground, staring sternly at nothing. See? Kondo's doing nothing. He's frickin' reading. I understand depression and everything, but, like, maybe giving him some work will help. Because, like, the whole... His whole depressive episode is coming because of the fact that so many people are leaving. So if he's working on things to help improve this place, I feel like his spirits might be lifted a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know. I just want Saito to, you know, not work as hard. <laughs> Perhaps Kondo's declining mood was becoming a distraction for Saito as well, proving that Kondo's good humor was dearly missed by all of us. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What? I gasped but audibly, as I couldn't help but express astonishment. I had heard that Saito had previously acted behind the scenes performing es espionage missions before, but... You had a duel with Nagakura? So it wasn't like a training or sparring match, but rather a fight to the death, right? くなくとも新八はあの時、俺を殺すつもりで切りかかってきた。Dang. Dot dot dot. Stories of the Shinsengumi's illustrious past were not foreign to me, especially when it came to the descriptive quality of Saito's observations. But hearing him tell the story now, I picked up that it was not his usual reminiscence. So, do you still feel the same way about the Shinsengumi as you did back then? Saito had for so long possessed the passionate urge to fight, even going so far as to cross swords with Nagakura. Did this fire still burn as brightly in his heart now as it did all those years ago? I accidentally moved my fan. Hmm. Saito was having an important epiphany. One that, after close consideration, must have come to both Harada and Nagakura as well. That we were all victims of an impermanence, an Im impermanence, that for a brief and wondrous time can make us feel something until life inevitably pulls us somewhere different. Maybe what had bothered Saito most was the search within himself for an answer as to whether or not he was strong enough to face that time when it came. So, what's your answer, Saito? Why, yes. Don't answer like you would to eat. And don't answer like you would to- Oh, okay. <sighs> I swear. I can't read at all. Why, yes! And don't answer like you would... Oh my goodness, to either Kondo or Toshi. Even as a captain of the Shinsengumi, is there an order that you simply would flat out refuse? So... So I could ask you to do anything? Hmm? 
So if they were to tell you to kill me, would you do that? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure he would go against the order if it was to kill me. Dot dot dot. I was a little frustrated by his unwillingness to give me a straight answer, but it was clear there was no point in continuing this conversation, so I stayed quiet. Just then... This guy. This is the guy that I was talking about earlier. I thought he died, but apparently he didn't. But also, I could have sworn that the other guy also did not die. Because he was a romance option, so I'm like, why in the heck? Why, why is he dead? Excuse me, what? どこの藩の者かは分かりませんが、この敷地に入り込もうとした敵兵がいたので、狙撃したところ、何事もなかったかのように起き上がったとか。Oh, come on. Shimada's anonymous. Um, oh no, it's that word. I can't say that word. Report brought a weary expression out of Saito. おそらくは。すぐにここにいる大使を全員集めてくれ。非常事態だ。Frick, man. Men were racing frantically throughout the compounds, and after a frenzied moment, all of the men staying in the Naga... Ugh. That always throws me off guard whenever there's a Japanese word. Nagaoka Mansion were gathered in the common room. It seemed as though even Toshi of all people was caught off guard by this predicament. Say, does anyone know where Sana and Toto are? I don't see them around here. As Saito wandered, yeah, wondered aloud, Shimada glanced at him timidly before offering up his hesitant answer. え、excuse what the heck? Perplexed. Perhaps they were all thinking the same thing. Rick. <laughs> it was Kondo, however, who voiced his concern. No, that can't be. A cursory glance around the room gave the impression that this sentiment wasn't felt by just myself. However, given the circumstances of our situation, there weren't too many other possible explanations for why all of this was happening. Nervously eats popcorn. Yeah, nervously eat it. Nom 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 nom. Kondo, come on, this isn't the time. Kondo's voice barely hovered about a faint murmur, and his disheartened spirit eluded no one in the room. Then he suddenly strained his posture and spoke up. Are you trying to become a martyr? Toshi's eyes shot open in bewilderment, and he was the first to react to Kondo's command. He gazed intently into Kondo's eyes, searching for any sign of what Kondo was planning. Instead of speaking, Kondo flashed a calm smirk to his old friend, a look I had never seen before. This seemed enough to satisfy Toshi, who stared plaintive, plaintive, plaintively in response to Kondo's restrained gesture. Toshi bit his lips in silence and looked at the floor. After a little while, he glanced up once more. I swear, Toshi, if you die here, I'm not going to forgive you. Kondo 
However, Saito, who normally would have bowed curtly to Toshi's order and follow it no later than after it was said, did not budge. I have a feeling that they don't plan on leaving at all. Also, I find it funny how in the last scene that we just had, he said that he would follow any order no matter what, and he's probably going against the order right now. I believe you do, Toshi. I don't believe Kondo does. And I feel like Kondo is going to just pull you down. Kondo's tone was lighthearted, but Saito's eyes were unwavering as he continued to stare at Toshi. I think the way Toshi was joking was a little bit strange to Saito, and his attitude was somewhat atypical to what he'd expect from the commander, or what we'd expect from the commander. Eventually, though, Toshi's eyes glimmered with a kind light. In that instance, Toshi's words seemed to have struck a nerve with Saito, whose eyes beamed widely in response. このままここで犬死にしたら、俺たちは官軍に逆らった希代の悪党集団のままで終わっちまうぜ。元百姓やら老人の寄せ集めで乱暴者で幕府や愛津藩の命令のままに人を切ってた俺たちではあるが。ふ
Because he's the one planning the freaking attack? I swear, if you brought Toto into all of this, Sanan, I'm going to kill you. Sanan, who is engaging with soldiers adorned in their Western uniforms? However, their conversation was conspicuously relaxed. It, it didn't seem like he was threatened at all. Son of a... Gotta be kidding me. Does that mean they're a part of the Imperial Army? But why would Sanan be with them? Oh my goodness. Come on. Both Shimada and I nodded, and we sneaked carefully towards the front gate. So, this you jerk. I really need to get on to um, doing an angry PNG because um, this dude has me angry. Now, <laughs> Can I personally kill Sanan? With their mark, all of the armed Imperial riflemen storm the compounds. Dot dot dot. I could almost feel the blood drain from my body. What could all of this mean? For some reason, our sworn enemies were able to locate the Shinsengumi and plan a strike. And those men, they spoke with Sanan as if they were familiar allies in casual dis discussion. Dot dot dot. Then, that must mean... Was Sanan really the one who leaked information of our whereabouts to the enemy? Both Kondo and Toshi, who were still inside the compounds, were completely unaware of this. What should I tell Saito? <sighs> what should we do? Because, like, I'm trying to think... I, I, I'm trying to go through a thought process right now. So, Saito just said that this is something that... Uh, Kondo was theorizing about, or at least thought would happen, which means that Kondo probably knows that Sanan is behind this, if Sanan could not be found. Though I'm curious where uh, Toto is, I'm curious where he is. So I'm assuming that Toshi probably does not know, but Kondo knows. So they're going to stay inside, they're probably going to take care of it. But at the same time, will it go sour? And should we go inside ourselves? I... I... I'm gonna save real quick. Because this one's difficult. Because I want to express my worry. Because I am worried. I'm worried about them. And that fact that Sanan is being a fucking... Sorry, I cursed there. Is being a freaking jerk. And basically... Is a traitor now. So I'm worried that they might not be okay. And I want to go back and save them. But at the same time, there isn't a whole lot that we can do. At the same time, I feel like we could just... We, we should just continue on with what we're doing. Because... Kondo seemed to know what is going on. So maybe we should continue going on and have them... Have Sanan and the others not know that we left. I think I'll go with that one. Saito, let's head to Azu. Aizu. Despite how badly I wanted to return inside the Na Naga... Mm, fuck. 
Frick. Dang it. I let out one cuss word. I let out one cuss word, and then all of them would just want to spill out now. Great. Despite how badly I wanted to return inside the Nagaoka mansion and warn Kondo and Toshi of what we'd uncovered, we cannot let Kondo and Toshi sacrifice to buy our time to escape go to waste. Saito timidly stared at the ground, baring his teeth, uh, baring, baring his teeth into his subtle, sup supple lip. But eventually, eyes in the cup. It was as if he'd come to an important realization. Then, Saito turned to stare into my eyes. Yes! We we pick we pick good choices today. We pick good choices. After offering his curt words of appreciation, Saito immediately turned around and began to march away. Mm-hmm. And so, the three of us made our way for Aizu. It is dark time. That day was likely the longest and most anxious and most anxiety-inducing day I had ever experienced in my life. Time seemed to move at a glacier's pace, and whenever I found myself alone, it was impossible to keep myself from thinking about the worst-case scenario. I had to tell myself, everything will be fine. Kondo and Toshi couldn't die. They will reunite with us soon. I repeated this sentiment until the words were burned in my mouth and helped to soothe my anxiety, we patiently awaited their return. After what felt like an eternity. Hey, it's Toto! What's up, Toto? What happened? Toshi, Toto. I felt warm tears slide down my cheeks. I was so glad to see them. Toshi and Toto were both safe and sound. I hope Sanan was killed. And I bet Kondo died. Shimada too seemed flushed with emotion, and he nodded repeatedly as he spoke in relief. But Toto, where have you been this whole time? さんが昼間どこかへ出かけようとしてるのを見かけてさ。後をつけたんだけど、見失っちまって。東所に戻ろうとした時、肘方さんを見かけたんだ。デイン。とし Sanan went crazy as soon as he was unable to hold a sword again and then drank the water of life. He he was a lost cause at that point. Dot dot dot. My mind raced back to the scene back there. I felt troubled seeing someone whom we had regarded as a close friend succumb to menacing temptation. Temptations. I, I wouldn't consider him a close friend. I never liked him to begin with, so... <laughs> Coming back to reality, I saw the gears turning in Toshi's head as he ruminated... R ruminated? Rum ruminate? Aloud. Why am I not surprised he was doing that? What else could you have done? Sanan probably would have killed Toto, honestly. I could have sworn that Toto's eyes were puffing up as he slumped his shoulders in defeat. What 
when he started going crazy and learning about the water of life. In his mind, nah. Nah. He thought, oh no, I can't use a sword. That means I can't do anything, which means I am useless. When it, that's not really the case. At all. Grief filled the air around us with a thick tension. If we were able to stop Sanan in the past, then maybe none of this would have happened. It felt as though all of us were cycling through our regrets in this moment, wallowing in our own shame. It was Saito, of all people, who was able to break the cloud of silence looming above our conversation. Most likely dead. It was a question that none of us were willing to ask, presumably because the answer frightened us. Toshi bit into his lip, choosing his words carefully before he'd said them, but it seemed that bringing the words to life was a difficult task for him. Toshi let out a heavy sigh, and his voice quivered as he finally answered Saito's question. Yeah, he died. Close enough. Hearing one piece of bad news after the other put all of us into stunned silence. Back when Kondo and the rest of the Shinsengumi were in Kyoto, they spent most of their time rounding up men who'd identified as Imperial Nationalist Warriors. Excuse me, I had a little burp there. Ooh. Imperial Nationalist Warrior, a term referring to those who opposed the Shogunite's rule in Japan, citing reasons such as foreign influence and corruption in order to back the Imperial Restoration of Power. Which, as expected, did not end well at all with the members of the Imperial Nationalist Party, who did their best to stifle our efforts. Imperial Nationalist Party, supporters of the Emperor, who are fiercely critical of foreign influence in Japan. During the initial phase of the uh, Bakamatsu period, the Satsuma Choshu considered themselves member of this ideology. Which is funny, because they're like, we don't want any foreign influence, but at the same time, they're friggin' using guns. And all that. Like, excuse me. It was these men who had custody of Kondo now. What would become of him? Imagining what torturous plans they had in store for him made my heart swell with pain. This feeling must have ached in Toshi as well, and he turned to gaze at the Surus formations above us. <laughs> I don't know about that. だまって殺されるなんて勝負じゃねえからな。王城岩の悪さだけは自信があるんだ。俺にできることなら何でもやるつもりだぜ。I don't know about that, Toshi. Toshi lowered his gaze to look at Saito. Saito,俺の代わりに大使連中をアイズまで連れてってやってくれ。ですが、副長は。Toto lifted his forearm to pound at his chest, and his voice beamed with pride. I was unsure if that would be enough to satisfy Saito's concern, but he responded in kind. Well then, I kind of don't want Toto to stay. I want him to come with us. Midnight was approaching. Long after the others had fallen asleep, I found myself tossing and turning in my futon. Instead, I gazed up at the glow of the constellations above my head, hoping that the night would pass soon. Just then, I heard a rustling sound near me, sensing that someone had awoken. I feigned being asleep, and I soundlessly turned to lie on my side to see who it was. Hey, it's Saito again. <laughs> it was Saito. He was being careful to sneak out quietly, and without making a peep, he exited where we were sleeping. 
Where could he be going? Perhaps a solemn place where he could stare longingly at the moonlight, safe in the shelter of the night? As he left the camp, I noticed his sunken, lonesome expression, so I silently followed closely behind him, hoping to get a peek into his plan. What you doing? Where are you going? Why are you running away? And this is one of the reasons why we needed to be next to you when you went to go take a rest. Because you would have done this. <laughs> I found Saito alone, just as I did back in Kofu, and his eyes were fixed on the pattern of scones shining throughout the patchwork of the night sky. Saito? I timidly called out to him, and he waited a second before turning to look over his shoulder. Maybe. <laughs> His words were, surprisingly, not as thorny as I expect, expected. Perhaps he was still occupied with unpacking all that Toshi had told us earlier, which felt like a shadow, um, I hate that word, looming in our hearts. Yes, I had a feeling you'd say that. May I stay beside you? Saito didn't answer. Instead, he continued to stare at the sky. If I knew Saito, his reluctance to speak hadn't indicated an opposition to what I'd asked. Mm, yes. Let's get closer. Kiss. I stepped onto the grass, watching my steps through the darkness to stand beside Saito. The only sounds around us were the chirp of insects humming in our ear, scattered throughout the forest. He's so pretty. It's not that we went wrong, it's the fact that everything else went wrong. Saito's voice just barely hovered above a murmur. I nearly... Conf oh, I nearly confused it with a cicada chirp. Wrong? He fallen he fell astray a long time ago. It seemed Saito was speaking to himself rather than asking me what I had thought about the situation. Well, his question demanded a thoughtful answer, and honestly, I questioned whether or not such an answer existed. Even for Saito, who's known for his deliberate, articulate observations, to have been left to wonder, I did my best to offer my perspective. I think the only one who could answer that question and admit to any wrongdoing would be Sanan himself. And maybe it wasn't only one moment of weakness or an isolated incident. Perhaps without realizing it, this was the result of many mistakes that Sanan made in his search of purpose throughout all of his chaos. Maybe at some point, while making all of these mistakes, he realized things would never be the same. Saito watched me intently, listening to my answer without speaking. Eventually, his eyes fell to the ground. No, I don't think you would. What do you mean? Nah, I don't think so. Also, for some weird reason, the background music is sounding very, very close to um the Donghua of Heaven Official Blessing. They're like, da, 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 da. so I'm like, <laughs> Heaven Official Blessing, where? <laughs> All of the pain Saito was feeling came into clear focus. Sanan, our friend, 
whom we saw that day. For Saito, who struggled to come to terms with living with this affliction, maybe Sanan appeared like a crystal ball, offering a sinister glimpse into his future. I don't think you'd end up like that. Just because the two of you drank the water of life does not mean that you are destined to experience the same fate as him. Saito's expression was full of doubt, something that was so unlike him. Because you are strong, Saito. No matter what choice you are confronted with, I don't expect you to ever make the wrong one. I almost saw a smile curl in the corner of his lips, but his shoulders remained tense and guarded. What makes you think I said strong in the way of physically? Hmm? <laughs> Gosh dang, MC. Strength doesn't just come from your ability to fight in battle. Your head? Well, his question came defensively, and I was thrown off a little by how much his delivery stung. Instead of answering, I retorted with my own question. Let me ask you something. Why is it that you keep your sword on the right side of your hips, Saito? There are plenty of people who are left-handed in this world. But for swordsmen, most of them try and adapt with using their right hand, don't they? You said so yourself. No matter which dojo you attended, they would immediately attempt to correct you to use your hand, your, your right. What is it that made you th keep going? That made you refuse to change? I'm hearing that background music. Da, 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 da. And I'm like... <sighs> Saito had not anticipated me to turn the line of questioning back onto himself. His eyes widened. It appears I struck a nerve with him, and after an awkward pause, he finally answered. Exactly. See? That just shows how strong you are, Saito. Because you kept with your resolve. You made a decision, and you stuck by it. And you fought for it, despite all of the nays- <laughs> Let me re-say that. And you fought for it, despite all of the naysayers. I don't think that could have been easy for anyone to deal with. You asked yourself if the same fate will happen to you as it happened to Sanan. But I think you already know the answer. Only you can decide what is right for yourself. And with that attitude, it can only lead to good things. At least that's what I think. Saito gazed at me stoically, gazing with puppy-like eyes and a docile expression. Whether or not my words resonated with him or if they were completely worthless for all he cared, was unknown to me. That's because nobody loved you as much as I do. Thank you very much. <laughs> he spoke flatly, and he once again looked towards the smattering... Smattering? Of stars glimmering across the sky. That's an interesting word to use suddenly. A gorgeous and serene sight indeed. So pretty. Oh, they were talking about the night sky. I thought they were talking about Saito. Because that's who I was staring at. Chapter 4, May 1868. Oh, wow. That was a long chapter. It's been an hour and 45 minutes. After the staged Imperial ambush out in Nagai... That's a long one. Nagareyama, the Shinsengumi was scattered with the wind. The days of planning and acting as a collective group seemed to be long behind us. 
without a knowledge of what paths our comrades and allies were heading, all we could do was adapt, one day at a time, left to tend our fates against the unknown. Despite these circumstances, Saito heroically led the remaining men to Aizu. Oh, excuse me, I had a burp again. According to scout reports, the troops who had fought against the Shinsen Gumi and Kofu were now marching to the northeast to subjugate whatever resistance remained. Supposedly, it was the Aizu who were currently engaging against the tide of incoming Imperial soldiers. Nagakura and Harada, sadly, had never returned to the Shinsen Gumi after their hasty departure. However, rumors of their activity including the formation of their own unit, which was headed for Aizu, greatly aroused my attention. It was under such pretense, clinging onto whatever normalcy we could re reclaim, that we had arrived in Aizu. Da da da! August, 1868. Wow, that was a fast month. Uh, month. Uh, there we go. One could hardly believe it was July. It was just August. Why is it now July suddenly? The frick? One could hardly believe it was July, as cool, blustering winds flowed from down the mountain ranges overhead. A summer in Aizu proved far more temperate than any I had experienced in either Edo or Kyoto. Our march to the city was met with the bright chirping of bugs and insects along the well-traveled paths. For us, our arrival followed an arduous but hopeful journey and a reunion that took months in the making. Yay, they're not dead. Toshi. <laughs> Toto, I'm so glad to see that you were both okay, both safe. My emotions got the better of me, and I wept flowing tears that glistened atop my smiling cheeks. ふくちょうが戻ってきてくだされば,100人生きです。そうそう。新鮮組のお肉長って、新政府軍の間でも恐れられてるみたいですから。俺たちの力で、新政府の奴らに目に物を見せてやりましょうよ! Heck yeah. Empire of Japan, a title bestowed upon the Meiji government prior to the end of the Boshin War that focuses on re reinstating the emperor as the supreme force of governance. It was created by the Satsuma Choshu forces. Saito, on the other hand... <gasps> Until Saito mentioned it, I hadn't noticed that Toshi was dragging his left leg as he walked. Oh? Uh, Utsunomiya Domain. A domain located in between Nikko Kaido and Oshu uh, Kaido after the Battle of Tobu Fushimi and Ale. <sighs> it defected to the Imperial Army. Jesus. Even though he was dealt a less than thrilling hand, I hadn't seen such an enthusiastic pos positive response from Toshi in a while, and he was smiling no less. Oh? Oh dang, there was a battle and we didn't even know it. Shirakawa Castle. Yeah, Shirakawa Castle. The fortress of the center of the Shirakawa domain. Over three months of intense warring occurred there or er, occurred here between the Imperial Army and the Shogunite during the Boshin War. Oh dang. 
Saito solemnly delivered his report detailing the challenges he'd faced, but Toshi looked at him kindly. Well, heck yeah, he is. He's a tough little boy. Something peculiar raised my attention. In the past, Toshi had acted on a policy of sternness and discipline, making him a lot harder to approach. Now, however, his demeanor was far more relaxed and sympathetic. A far cry from the commander under whom I had served. I wondered to myself if during our separation he had experienced a change of heart, one that challenged him to open himself up to those he had cherished most. Ah oh man, it's that word again. As I ruminated upon this thought, Saito had asked the question about which all of us had been worrying. Oh, she fell silent. He let, out a head of, he let out a heavy sigh, and his gaze dropped timidly to face his feet. His answer, expectedly, was short. Dead. I already took him for dead long ago, so... Somewhere in our hearts, we had all anticipated this answer, but having it expressed so directly... There was nothing to stop our hearts from sinking, for each following breath to be drawn into our lungs was like pulling tar from the cracked, dark earth. Seppuku, the act of disemboweling oneself, which carried weight in society as a ritualistic form of suicide, thereby preserving the honor of one's name while simultaneously acknowledging the depth of one's sins. I actually found out that um, they would do it in the stomach, I believe, in Japan, because that's where they believe the soul is, like above the navel or something like that, or abdomen, I don't remember, and that like... I don't know where I was going with that thought process. I was going to say how uh, in China, instead, they um, uh, just, you know, on their throats instead of on their stomach because they thought of something else. But I, it totally blanked as soon as I started talking. Don't mind me. I might, I might be giving false facts here. <laughs> Toshi shook his head. Not surprised. Be beheaded? Beheading, a humiliating form of execution that involves the forced removal of the head with an enormous, sharp blade. Although both se Although both seppuku, se seppuku and beheading were public forms of execution, what they meant were different entirely. Ancient legends used to say that a human soul was st I just said that <laughs> was stored inside their abdomen. So by committing sempuku and slicing open your chest cavity, it meant cutting into the place where your soul took refuge. No easy feat indeed. It's not the chest, it's the stomach. Compared this to the act of beheading, where your neck is efficiently struck with a thick, sharp blade, a death, I imagine, that was painless compared to seppuku. Seppuku was a statement, and by confronting death in such a manner, a warrior's honor was preserved. It was the embodiment of chivalry in one last act. However, there is no honor in being beheaded. There are no appeals or vestiges of respect. There is only silence until the blade is fallen. Thing. He was very soft in that moment, even I could barely hear him. As Toshi recounted Kondo's fate, he started to choke up as he spoke, struggling to articulate the visceral image as he conjured it in his mind. He took a deep breath, and through gritted teeth, we heard what became of our chief. <laughs> I know this is an intense scene, but I absolutely feel nothing. 
<laughs> every other scene in this so far, I have felt every single freaking emotion, but for this, I, I'm not phased. I'm not phased. I was, I was invested in Kondo a little bit, but now, like, I can tell how much I wasn't actually invested in him. Never before had I seen Toshi so vexed, so disturbed. Saito, however, took all of this in without speaking, and he stared plaintively at the floor. After a pause, he lifted his head and spoke. Toshi turned up to look at Saito. Throwing moist, tear-soaked eyes, er, through moist, tear-soaked eyes, he shot a bitter glance at Saito that made my hair stand. He was troubled. Toshi's aggressive response surprised all of us, but Saito's eyes grew wide in astonishment. He could only stare back at the visibly shaken Toshi, questioning what he could have meant. Probably because he was planning on being a martyr and dying to begin with. That's probably why he took it like a man. Okay, that's a little touching. That that phrase right there is a little bit touching. Okay, I feel a little bit sad now. Are you sure it was out of pride? Are you sure he was proud? I don't think he was. Honestly, I don't think he was. Saito fell silent. Toshi's words felt heavy, or fell heavily on the ears of everyone in the room, and we were speechless. They rang so true to what we had been feeling, but didn't say. Just then. Then do this! <laughs> Everything's soft, and then he comes in, and he's like, I have a message! Aizuhan <laughs> Just as Saito looked over to his men to give the command, a voice stopped him. Eh? Sendai Domain, a large and influential domain in the northeast, governed by uh, Yoshi Kunide uh, Date, and opposition Daimo, leader of the Northern Alliance. All it took was Toshi's order for Saito to freeze. Wait, did his PNG just glitch right now? Or was that just my eyes? I feel like that was just my eyes. I could have sworn that Saito's PNG glitched for a moment. Man, we're just going all over the place now. So we just came here, did nothing, got losses, and are just leaving? Yeah. 
Jeez. In other words, it seemed that the Aizu's plot to strike the castle was a decoy for the Shinsengumi to escape and support the Northeast safely. If that was the wish of the Lieutenant General Matsu Daira, then perhaps the Shinsengumi had no choice but to follow these orders. Lieutenant General, the official military title reserved for uh, Katamori Matsu Daira of the Aizu Domain, who formerly led the Imperial Guard. Saito, <gasps> indeed. Toshi saw Saito, shot Saito a stern look, like an instructor staring down upon his student. But this did nothing to face Saito, who merely gazed back at him coldly. アイズハンに多大なる豪恩光を被っています。アイズハンがなければ、今の新選組はなかったはず。新選組というのもアイズ校より賜ったものです。そのアイズがまだここで新政府軍と戦っている。我々が武士としてアイズ校に備中を尽
最初にお前の相手をしたのが宗次じゃなかったら骨の五六本は折れてたはずだぜ下手すりゃ死人が出てたかもな宗次も宗次でお前を殺す勢いで木刀を叩き込もうとしやがるし俺たちが途中で止めてなきゃ確実にどっちかが死んでたな I can't stop looking at Saito's expression. It's so stern and so powerful. I love it. And it's so crisp and clean and pretty. There is a bright glimmer of nostalgia coming from Toshi's eyes as he reminisced about Shi'e Hall. Kondo, Toshi, Sanan, Okito, Nagakura, Harada, and Todo. The place where all of the Shinsengumi men had spent their youth. And for Saito, it was a home of refuge in which he could forge both his identity and his technique. A place to call home. Aww, baby. それに右差しは反則でも何でもねえだろうお前の立場で考えりゃ周りの連中全員が反則してるみてえなもんだろうしな Coming from Toshi, those words must have felt or must have been the greatest gift Saito could have ever received あの時俺はこう思いましたあんたや近藤さんの命令なら尊上派の大物志士でも大名でも偉人でもどんな人間でも切り殺すことができると。Patriot, a person who devotes themselves to their country, sometimes even going so far as to give their life. 実際お前には汚れ仕事ばっかりさせてきちまったよな。悪かったな。Aw, poor baby. Saito shook his head curtly in response to Toshi's apology. それを受け入れて実行したのは俺の意思です。俺は自分で命令に従うことを選びましたそしてそれをこれから先もずっと続けていくつもりでしたなあ斎藤俺たちから離れることをそこまで申し訳なく思うことねえんだぜお前はお前の意志で主君をお前の生き方を選んだただそれだけのことだお前が選んだ道は間違ってねえよ。サイト looked to be fighting back tears. He subtly dug his teeth into his lips, trying to hold back the deluge of emotions that or emotion that was waiting to burst. But even so, he spoke with a restrained monotone. Perhaps, if he hadn't done so, his voice would be a little more than a bubbly, blubbery mess of emotion. So, in typical fashion, Saito was attempting to remain、uh, taciturn in the face of duty. After a moment, Toshi turned to Shimada. Shimada, what do you want to do? I want to go to the house. 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 What about you, Toto? Are you leaving with Toshi as well? Oh, you're so baby. Toto stopped himself. Did you think of an answer? Toto scratched his nose absent mindedly before timidly assuming a reflective tone. もし俺があのまま羅刹にならずに死んでたとしたらきっと最後の瞬間こう思ってたんじゃねえかなせっかくだからみんなで作った新選組がどうなるのかを最後まで見届けたかったあーベイビーおい平助最後までっつうのはどういう意味だ<笑>新選組がもうすぐなくなっちまうみてえじゃねえか 
Toshi glared at Toto, but then he stuck out his tongue playfully. <laughs> oh. There's my Toto. What about you guys? Soma and Nomura? Such babies. I see. This whole time, I've been walking alongside the men of the Shinsengumi. But now, our paths were splintering. Splintering. And it seems each of us had a destiny to fulfill. I suppose I'd be lying if I said that I wouldn't miss them. But like Toshi said, their path is their own. Um, it was Saito, of course. I... Toshi had mentioned that this place would soon become a battlefield fraught with death and danger. If I were to remain here, I likely would stand no chance. However, the same choice fell on Saito's shoulders. If either of us chose a different path, it was likely that the two of us would never see one another again. I... I will stay here, but let me... let me quickly save once again. We'll save. Hopefully I picked the... I... will stay here. My answer came to everyone's surprise. The individual who seemed most stupefied was... Saito, whose expression was still aimed towards the ground in a fit to suppress his emotions. Although the words hadn't come from his mouth, his brows told the entire story, furrowed with so much curiosity as to why I answered how I did. Yeah, what about it? Yeah, at least I'd be with Saito. Yes. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared. But the thought of living my life away from Saito, scattered somewhere else while he fought here, I couldn't think of another option. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, I think I know why you want to stay. You're in love with Saito. And yes, I am. As Toshi expressed his re uh, resignation, he glanced over at Saito. In turn, Saito's gaze was fixed on me, staring at me with the same, stoic blue eyes I'd always admired. <laughs> He's given us alone time. With that, Toshi kindly patted my shoulder with his hand. Then, he turned around and began sauntering down the mountain path alongside Shimada, Toto, Soma, and Nomura. As soon as their footsteps were out of earshot, shot, Saito broke the silence. Because I love you, and I want to be with you, and I want to make sure you're okay. It had been so long since I'd found myself on the other end of one of Saito's frigid questions. Dot dot dot. The bite in his voice made my stomach drop, but I stood tall and stayed put. No. See, I held it back that time. I was going to say no, but I was like, I feel like the MC is going to say no, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I don't know what he I looked straight at Saito, facing his harsh words head-on, and I turned the questions back to him. Saito, you plan on dying on this battlefield, do you? No answer came from him at first. Surely he had planned on explaining some lie in order to save face. Instead, he grimaced angrily and threw his hands into the air as if he had ab abandoned his original answer. <laughs> In this moment, 
I'd realized that any sentiment shared between Saito and myself was thinner than a strand of hair. We'd never exchange promises for the future. In all actuality, I had no clue what Saito thought of me, much less if those thoughts bloomed into anything real. All that we had to fall back upon were our words. Perhaps only in the space of our conversations had I done anything to climb into his heart, but only just. Even so, I had to try. Then I'm staying here too. I won't leave your side until the very end. As the words escaped my lips, Saito scowled at me with such ferocity, it was as if his eyes could summon daggers that were aimed right for me. No. <sighs> I do have business, and that business is you. But I refused to move. Instead, I balled my hands into tight fists and spoke. That's not it. I don't want to stay with you just because you saved my life. I was tired of being placed at the center of his questions, and instead, I fought back. Is it too much to ask to want to be with you? My heart pounded fiercely in my chest, realizing I was challenging a man who stored his anger silently behind his vacant expressions. But I was steadfast and staring into his eyes, patiently attempting to draw whatever truth I could from them. Saito once again said to me, that the heart sings its song through the eyes. Pools of azure floated idly in his irises, and I was lost in them as their light made its way to me. Eventually, he turned away. At last, an honest truth came from his tired lips. And so too, relief came to me. Saito had exposed his heart to me, face to face. Well, I can't bear the thought of yours either, Saito. But this is the truth I've come to accept. The truth that one day you may not return to me. But I also accept that if you abandon the Aizu when they need you most, you may regret it forever. So grant me this. I want to remain at your side until I can no longer breathe. I am yours. I know that this is rather selfish of me to request. Saito took in everything I had said, quietly considering my humble words. It looked as though each word was turned over and over again in his head, perhaps searching for one last way to convince me to leave with Toshi. But... What the MC said would have broke me. It would have broken me. So um, I'm glad we got a point for that because, um, yeah, that was that. Yeah, I was actually starting to like tear up a little bit. <laughs> Out of the blue came a tender reflection. <laughs> こうしている今も土方さんのもとへ走ろうか今から急いで追えばまだ間に合うのではないかと考え迷っている敵兵に殺される間際不傷した時落ち水の毒で血に狂った時身苦しく野田内回らぬ自信などないただ俺は死
His tone didn't have the same detached nonchalantness to which I had become accustomed, but rather, it was a frustrated expression of the state between him and me. This was likely Saito's inner self revealed, the true Saito, who bore no need for pretense. <laughs> <sighs> That's not how I see you. I'll love you even at your worst. His voice was hushed, but his words struck such a potent nerve with me that it was as if he were screaming them into my face. And still, I refuse to move. I don't think you should worry too much about whether or not you're making the right choice. And this is something that's stressing you out. So whatever choice you make, I will be there to support you no matter what. And no matter what happens to you, I will never think anything less of you. So please, let me stay with you. I could see Saito's eyes widen. Our silence brought with it a nervous tension, and I almost felt as though he would strike me, or even grab my wrists and drag me to Toshi's convoy himself. As impatient and dread began to be get the better of me. <gasps> yeah. We got our kiss! We got our kiss! <laughs> we got our kiss! Saito came close to me, our faces only an inch apart. His slender fingers wrapped around my neck, and then he cozily drew me in to embrace me tightly. Those gorgeous blue eyes were gazing into my own, and together we basked in an unspoken comfort. His lower lip quivered as if he could break into my tears at any moment. Within Saito's timid embrace, our eyes were locked together, but then he pulled back in a nervous stupor. <gasps> No! 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 Stay! 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 Please! For the love of everything that's holy, please stay! Hold on. I... Good sir! Please! Do not back away! I'm gonna drag back your sorry head and bring it close to my lips again. Hi! Every word he spoke sounded like he was working to convince himself of my answer rather than an honest, inquisitive tone. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Saito's leer was piercing. And with both eyes, he was searching desperately for validation. It was the first time I'd seen such an urgent, vulnerable expression behind his eyes, which had seen a lifetime of pain. So I told him the truth. Yes, I want nothing more than to be with you, Saito. Please. Take me with you. <gasps> yes, at last. We have our kiss. We have our tender moment. It is love. <gasps> yes! I love this. <laughs> I love this beyond belief. I looked up at Saito, telling the man whom I had loved 
everything I knew he had yearned to hear. Saito's eyes moistened ever so slightly, and for a brief moment, he seemed caught in an emotional limbo between laughter and crying. <laughs> I love this man. <laughs> A wave of relief seemed to come over Saito, and he gulped anxiously. Then, his lips slowly approached mine. Just before our lips touched, Saito contemplated for just a beat. And then, as if he were repeating my words again in his head, his lips curled into a smile. <laughs> At last, our lips met. <laughs> We've reached the peak of a romance, everybody. Kissing. Ah, I could end the stream here if I wanted to. I am so pleased and so freaking happy. Oh my goodness. It was the first time I'd ever kissed a man. At first, my heart raced frantically, pounding harder than I'd ever felt. And then... I was enveloped by a warm sense of calm. Saito's subtle lips, or subtle lips, quivered preciously against mine. If only this kiss were a promise for the future, beyond a blissful emphoria. Emmeria? Frick that word. But what lies in stores for. <laughs> but what lies in store for us? We don't know. It could be a lifetime of despair and woe. But even then, the moist, tender touch of his full lips pressed against mine as we exchanged a moment of passion gave me a life's worth of happiness. In this moment, our hearts became one. And this alone was enough for us as we considered our lives hanging in the balance of our future. <sighs> I'm a little lightheaded now. I I am beyond happy. We got our kiss and I am in love. I'm going to save real quick <laughs> because um I don't want that to go away. <laughs> the next night, as we were approaching our camp, our walk was interrupted by misfortune. Saito! The color in Saito's face had all but left, and he began to gasp for air. Why am I not surprised? Why? He dug his fingernails into his chest, grimacing from the agonizing pain as sweat began to cover his frail frame, or fragile frame. I... What should we do? I feel like having him endure it is just a wrong move entirely. I could give him medicine, but last time we gave him medicine, it apparently didn't do anything. And we've given him blood two times in a row now. So I don't know if that's like a bad thing or not. If we were to do it a third time. I kind of just want to give him blood, honestly. I, I think... After that moment, after our tender little moment, I feel like giving him medicine would just feel like a backhand slap. And making him endure it just feels like we're like pointlessly doing nothing and yeah. I I'm gonna give him our blood again. S Saito, here, drink my blood. Saito, as usual, shuddered at the thought, and he turned to look away from me in a discomfort fit. 
Like I had done previously, I unsheathed my Kodachi and made a small cut just underneath my ear. Oh, we got this scene again. Oh, that has me worried now. Saito quietly held me closely, bringing his eager lips to suck at the small droplets of blood emerging. His warm, tingling, t tingling tongue traced the path formed by the slow trickle of the falling droplets down my neck. After a panicked moment, Saito's breathing finally began to calm, and eventually, it normalized. I tried to step back to give him some room, but as I moved, I felt his hand tighten on my shoulder. Oh no, I'm worried. Then, he coolly whispered into my ear as the cut underneath began to seal itself. Oh no, did I do- oh no, I think I did the wrong choice. <laughs> His words were so gentle and sincere. Okay. I gave him a small nod, and I leaned myself against him. Excuse me, what? What happened? What happened? <laughs> it was the night before our departure for Shirakawa Castle. I had spent a peaceful night in a room all by my- oh. I had spent a peaceful night in a room all to myself thanks to the Aizu- uh, Aizu's military generously re I cannot speak. Thanks to the Aizu's a, a military generously renting a house for our accommodations, although our own chances of victory were dwarfed by the size and weaponry of our adversaries, for some strange reason, I felt no fear or worry. Perhaps it was because I had already accepted the fact that our backs were against the wall. Or maybe, maybe it was because I was given a chance to remain beside the man I love. Yukimi. It is. Are you gonna sleep with me? You better rest too. <laughs> why do I speak? <laughs> well, why don't you rest too, Saito? Saito reacted sheepishly to my suggestion, and he turned away blushing. Yeah, so why don't you... I'll know. Be next to me. Sleep next to me. Huh? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> uh, but, but I'd be sleeping. Mm, no. I shook my head. I feel the same way. Sleeping right now seems impossible. Saito's response was short, but even so, I could tell there was a weight and sentiment behind it. The room was filled with a nervous silence, as if we both, as if we both lingered on the cusp of saying something more. Ever since we had separated from Toshi in, oh, from Toshi in Nagarayama. Saito and I had seen numerous skirmishes with the Imperial forces. I became aware of our thin chances of survival. Hope became a hollow gesture. This uncertainty made each moment we had shared all the more precious, and we savored every single one with aplop? I don't know that word, as our hearts willed it. I glanced cautiously at Saito. He stared outside of the window silently, watching the scattered stars glimmering above. Saito, do you enjoy looking at the stars? My question prompted him to gaze inquisitively at me in kind. That night, in Kofu, you were so entranced by the stars that night as well. I'm just curious, man. Well, yes, I have loved you for some time now. <laughs> the words came so naturally from my mouth. These feelings of attraction had stewed in my heart for such a long time. How had I not realized it? Saito merely blushed and shrugged his shoulders. 
夜空だけではない昼間の空も虹も海も好きだ Oh, I love this man. Starry nights, sunsets, rainbows in the sea. Saito seemed to be mouthing off random phrases, and I cocked my head in a befundlement. It seemed as though. Yeah, it seemed as though none of these things had anything in common, but. Saito stared once more outside of the window in admiration, as if it were a bright, sunny morning. Mm-hmm. This. This right here is why I love this man. <laughs> you have a point. Every time I had found Saito stargazing, it seemed he was reflecting upon his own self doubts. His heart always seemed so heavy. The timing of his reflective mood was understandable, and his melancholy gaze was quaint beside the window. <laughs> I sat up, and I walked towards Saito. Saito, are you feeling anxious right now? Because Kondo and Toshi, neither of them are here to offer any words of guidance or support for you anymore. Saito reached his hand over to mine and clasped it kindly. <laughs> I love this man so much! Yes! That's what I've been saying repeatedly. You have me beside you, and I have you beside me. He smiled. Saito's words were touching, but... Are you sure? When you're stressed, or if you're in pain, or if you're stuck wondering if you've made the right choice, do you trust me to help you and be there for you when you need me? For Saito, both Toshi and the Shinsengumi provided an irreplaceable system of support. I had no confidence whatsoever that I could fill any of the roles that either Toshi or the group had given. In response, Saito gripped my hand tightly. He began to entwine his slender fingers lovingly with my own, which at first was a little awkward, but it was an adorable gesture nonetheless. <laughs> I can do that. I can very much do that. I'm still gonna see it. And honor your duties as my um husband. Give me one moment. I just noticed that I have a little unread notification in. Oh, dropped frames detected 25% over last two minutes. Oh, dang. Oh. Interesting. Uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to feel about that. I don't want to, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> Heck, he's so romantic. Yes, he is. He's so freaking romantic. I love this man. <laughs> oh, shoot. I need to, I need to get back on the game. I see. Like always, Saito's calm reassurance comforted me. For as long as he would have me, I will stick by him. Even until the very last second of my life, I will do whatever he asks of me as long as we are together. It was deflating, however, to think that these moments were, un were numbered. If anything, I recognized this as an opportunity to ask him about things I had always wondered. 
What should I ask him about first? I love this man. Let me save real quick. <laughs> Let me save once again real quick. What should we ask him? Should we ask him about the future? Like, how our future together is going to be? Or should we... Like, I feel like if we bring up the past, it's just going to be like... Or wait, no. If we bring up the past, we could talk about, like, the snow bunnies or something. Oh my goodness. I have a notification again. 26% over last two minutes? What the fuck? What the heck is the dropped frame rates? We've been having internet issues the... Uh, yesterday and... Today, we were having some internet issues. I hope it isn't causing too much of a problem. Hopefully not. Lee. And I'm not even 100% sure what to do about that, honestly. Ugh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what should we do, you guys? Should we reminisce uh, about the past or should we talk about the future that is probably most likely going to be our inevitable demise? I don't know. I feel like... I feel like talking about the past and like how we felt beforehand might be a good idea. Oh, yes, Saito. Do you remember this? I pulled a small charm from, my po from out of my pocket. At first, Saito gazed at it absentmindedly. I giggled as I opened up the charm. Inside of it was a pressed cherry blossom petal. Yes, I knew we would do that. Although its color may have faded, you could still make out the rosy image of what it used to be. Yeah, it's the rose petal that I asked for. Or not the rose petal, the sakura petal. Saito fell speechless, and his mouth was agape in surprise. At first, he held his breath, and his hand shook as he reached out to touch it, as if he had witnessed an apparition appear before his very eyes. Within the charm was the flower petal that Saito had given me before leaving the Shinsengumi to join the guardians of the Imperial Tomb. <laughs> Hi. Well, not exactly. It's dried up quite a bit, and it's not in the best of shape. Behind Saito's eyes, I could see a flurry of emotion whirling through him as he stared at the petal. I watched his lip quiver ever so slightly. I had known him for so long now that he didn't even need to speak for me to know what he was thinking. Yes, we got a point! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. Because <laughs> we got a point, and I love this man. <laughs> and it is such a beautiful symbol of everlasting beauty, like... Mm. Give me one moment. I, I keep getting notifications from my freaking streamlabs about the frame rate drop and i i don't know what to do about it honestly i really don't know how to take care of that <laughs> like what do i do what is different from normal except for my internet <laughs> saito let out a satisfied grin uh-huh you mean this flower petal but it has wilted so much He's speaking of the concept itself. Oh my goodness, I got the notification again. Stop it. <laughs> He's right. He's right. <laughs> the sentiment behind it has been preserved all this time because um, the MC held it in like a little charm and everything. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I feel like a giddy schoolgirl. <laughs> I think Saito was fighting back how overcome with emotion he may have felt. Then he closed his eyes and handed the charm back to me. <laughs> no problem at all. 
<laughs> Jesus, why do I speak? <laughs> oh, it's no problem at all. Watching Saito beam with such delight filled me with happiness. Silence fell between us once more. Bright, white clouds covered every inch of the sky. Our evening together, it seemed, had come to an end. However, Saito and I found ourselves unwilling to budge. His hand was still gently coiled in mine, and our bodies were leaned against each other. After prolonged silence, Saito glanced over in my direction before whispering softly in my ear. It really could just be your internet being a butt. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Also, I wonder what this promise is. Uh huh? A promise? What is it? Saito kept his stare fixed on me. That's what I've wanted to hear all this time. Thank you. He finally admitted it. Yes! His tone was hushed and faltering, but within each word was a force of resolve and purpose. Saito was making his... Saito was making this vow to me. Knowing that he had assumed this responsibility and went so far as to call it a promise made my heart flutter. Yet, it was difficult to respond at first. What response could I give after he had poured himself to me? My hands were trembling, but I reached out to him. I wanted to be as close to him as I humanly could. I wanted him to know how much I loved him. Yes! <laughs> oh dang, now I have two notifications. Well, I'm sorry, I don't know how to fix the drop frame rate. Okay, okay. Give me, give me a hot moment. G give me a hot moment. I need to save the last, uh, the last, um, um, thingy that I took. Oh no, I accidentally overwrote the last one. Never mind, don't save it. It's fine. Fine, everything's fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll go back to the gallery and save it again. <gasps> we got a second kiss! We got a second kiss! <laughs> a bold move, perhaps. But sometimes, when words fail us, it is best to take matters into our own hands. I love you, Saito. Saying it comes so easily, but showing you is something else altogether. I hoped that, as our mouths were connected in the throes of passion, he knew everything I'd wanted to say. As our lips parted, this was my only wish. <laughs> Do I have to have a reason to kiss you? Like, do I have to have a reason? I don't think I have to have a reason to kiss you. Like, excuse me? <laughs> oh, dang. Give me a moment. I'm still getting notifications. Yes, we got two kisses. Also, the notifications. I don't know what the percentages mean. I really don't know what they mean. And it's starting to worry me because I'm getting, like, a bunch of them now. I hope it isn't anything. But <laughs> Saito's expression. We were bold. We are the dominant one now. Ha ha ha. Shh. Don't ask. <laughs> He attempted to gather his breath and reattempt his question, but then he fell silent. 
a long silence, mind that I had accept expected. Throughout our pause and conversation, my cheeks were still flushed with color. So I took his hand once more. Why don't we go to bed? <gasps> Excuse me. <laughs> is it what I think it is? <laughs> is it what I think it is? I think it is. I think it is. <gasps> Our hands were still entwined. Saito's cheeks were red, and I led him to the futon, into which we carefully made himself snug. Or in, into which he carefully made himself snug. I saw a playful grin curl in the corner of his lips, and it made me smile in return. Something happened that night. You cannot tell me nothing happened that night. Something happened. They did the diddly do. They did the naked tango. <laughs> yes. <sighs> I am happy and content now. I swear, if anything ruins this mood. <laughs> the next day... The Aizu Domain had sent a scouting troops to survey the area around uh, Shirakawa Castle, but contact with that troop had been quickly lost, which was an ominous sign for all of us. Saito and I were assigned to leave for Shirakawa in order to uncover any details about their whereabouts. I haven't noticed any issues on my end, so it may just be a heads up. Okay. I hope it's just a heads up and nothing, because I keep seeing like a freaking notification like keep popping up and it's like the bright red dot compels me to click it like i'm that person that has like that tries to get rid of all notifications on my phones emails anything if i see a red notification i get rid of it as soon as freaking possible because i don't know why but it compels me to <laughs> so i hope it's nothing i really hope it's nothing we had made our approach to the castle stealthily but both of us had an eerie suspicion that something was off that is very strange. From what the Aisu officials had told us, all the Imperial Army troops were stationed within the castle, but it was conspicuously silent around the entire castle, and it was peculiar it, and it was peculiar to think that there was no activity in or around the castle when we had arrived. That fade to black, yeah, that fade to back totally meant something. It totally meant something. At least I know if we die now, we did the diddly-do. As we'd expected, there was no sign of the scouting team, which was worrisome, to say the least. Just then, a rustle in the bushes startled us. <gasps> Saito immediately clasped his hand around the hilt of his blade, drawing his attention to the rustling bush. Hi, you don't have to tell me twice. Okay. I hid behind Saito as he directed. He held it in a deep breath, channeling all of his focus to listen for a sign of what the sound could be. Oh, good sir, protect me harder. I love this man. I love what he just did. It is smexy as all heck. I love it. Saito's grip upon his sword tightened apprehensively. Wherever those footsteps were coming from, they were stepping closer and closer to us. To, to us. Without a second thought, Saito unsheathed his sword and swung fiercely at the approaching stranger. Hopefully, hopefully it's a foe. However... <laughs> Ah! Oh! Na Nagakura! The stranger reflectively paired Saito's blade, which must have meant they expected our arrival. The hairs on the back of my neck stood as as the moonlight cut through the thick layer of fog, exposing the stranger. Nagakura? Nagakura? It was. Eh? Nagakura, it's us! 
Sai tu? Bia! Nagakura? As soon as Saito realized that he'd attempted to strike at Nagakura, he sheathed his sword. I love this! I love this so much! <laughs> Nagakura, what are you doing here? Harada! That voice, it was. I love this! Harada, you're here too? <laughs> I love these men. What? If there were furies here, especially of the ravenous variety we'd seen in Kofu, then so is my father. My son. <laughs> yeah. Just then. Is it furies? Oh, frick, it's furies this time. We have three captains and a, 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 a demon who can't do much. But we have three captains... And one of them is Fury, who will fight to the bitter end for love. So, I think we got this. Saito reached for the hilt of his katana. So too did Nagakura and Harada. All of them were ready to move at the drop of a hat. Suddenly... Shadows leapt from out of their corners onto the path. Soaring to such a lofty height was far beyond the cup capabilities of a human jump. Yes. The Furies charged at us with katanas that were sorely lacking in range compared to Harada's spear, which he had been twirling with the glee. Heck yeah. Harada reflectively thrust his spear into the chest of an incoming fury, an act followed by the eerie sounds of mangled bones and blood splattering across the ground. <laughs> just a little- oh, dang. Harada's aim, it seemed, had just barely missed the fury's heart. Which meant that its wound would heal itself soon as if nothing had happened at all. Off to the side, Nagakura thrashed his sword wildly at the crowd of furies, hoping to sneak a swipe in. Sneak a swipe in. In spite of his outburst, Nagakura had a small, sly grin on his face. After dodging the path of an incoming enemy sword, Nagakura viciously swiped at the Fury's unguarded arm, and the hiss of flesh splitting cracked in my ear. Saito caught this act in his per peripherals. Did he cut off his arm? Unlike Nagakura's frenzied technique, Saito moved with finesse, striking at each of the Fury's vital points before their bodies piled atop one another. Yes. Yes. The desperate, cacophonous shrieks of dying furies echoed boorishly throughout the forest. Despite their enhanced speed and strength, the furies still suffered from am amateurish swordsmanship. There were no match against the skilled precision demonstrated by Saito, Nagakura, and Harada. <laughs> I now have five notifications. I hate this. Why do you do this to me? 
Nagakura wiped the sweat beads dripping down his brow. Then, an unexpected voice startled us. Oh no. Huh? Excuse me, what? <gasps> Don't tell me that scouting party was turned into furies not of their own free will. From underneath the pile of dismembered carcasses, one of the furies murmured a low groan. What you got to say? Saito stretched out his arm to stop Nagakura, and then he cautions, cautiously approached the Fury. The Fury struggled to catch his breath as his lungs were becoming crushed by the weight of the other bodies. Saito looked him in the eye and spoke curtly. <laughs> The soldier nodded with displeasure and began to speak. What? They're obsolete? They're obsolete? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Have they improved the Furies once again? He's probably not a member of the Imperial Army. The soldier shook his head languidly. I don't know what that word is. <sighs> no. They weren't even the scouts, they were just civilians. Oh my goodness, you poor soul. From the soldier's description, I assumed he was speaking about my father. Wow. I'm still so confused on what he means by that they're no use anymore. Like, have they perfected the water of life? Hearing the sins my father had been committing made my stomach turn. I was speechless. Oh my goodness. With each word spoken, the soldier's sunken face became more pale, and he couldn't breathe without wincing. Then, something terribly strange occurred. Oh my goodness, he's actually fading. Like, he slowly got grayer and grayer. Oh my goodness.
Sorry, something was coming up with the internet and everything again. So I was trying to take care of it. Oh my goodness! This poor man! He's gonna make me cry! He stretched his fingers out towards the sky, but I could swear they were turning white before our eyes. And yeah, this dude is definitely, like, graying out. It was almost as if they had been lit ablaze from inside and deteriorating at an astonishing rate. He's going completely grayscale. <gasps> Excuse me, what? Soon, the tips of his fingers resembled the end of a burning incense, his flesh charring into crumbling ash. At the end of this display, only ash remained. Excuse me, what? Yeah. That, um, yeah. Apparently so. Normally when, when a creature turns into ash, it's because of like sunlight or something, but like since sunlight just weakens them, I wonder why this time they turn to ash. Oh. Right. Everyone nodded in agreement, and we all readied ourselves to rush for Shara Ka Shirakawa Castle. Saito, however, stood firm, as if he weren't joining us. Saito, what's the matter? We need to hurry. His eyes dropped to the floor, and he began muttering to himself. <laughs> Oh no, is he wondering how many of them were just like this dude? Oh. Sadly, yeah, that, that has to happen sometimes. Oh, dang. Look at his eyes. He is, like, scarily frightening right now. I don't think I've ever seen that expression before. S Saito, you're scaring me, my dude. A tenant's fire emerged. A tenant's? A, a tenant's? A, a, oh, a tenacious. Sorry, my bad. A tenacious fire emerged behind Saito's bright eyes. His glare alone could have killed a man. After staring angrily at the ground for another moment, he finally looked up and faced me. Hi. Oh my goodness. And so, the four of us approached the castle gate, sprinting hastily through the dim, forested trail. This is suspicious as all heck. Very fishy. We all nodded and stepped tentatively towards the direction of the front gate. Just then, the crack of gunfire thundered behind us, or beside us. We all gasped and held our breath, thinking a nearby rifleman had spotted our movements, but... Eh? 
俺はお前らとこうして戦えるのを楽しみにしてたんだからよ。I don't recognize this voice. That voice. お前らが来てるってのは分かってんだ。とっとと姿を現してくれよ。I, I haven't heard him speak a lot. Or I haven't heard him speak much all throughout these games. Um, so I, I didn't realize that it was him. <laughs> <laughs> the tall tan demon Shira knew he had been waiting for us at the gate's opening. Saito shot a glance at Shira Nui with fervent animosity. お前らと戦える機会が巡ってきたってのにミスミス放り捨てちまうのももったいない気がしてよ会いたかったぜ俺と互角に戦えるくらいには腕を磨いてきてくれたんだろうなお、Although Shiranui's own agenda may have been at odds with both Kazuma and my father it seemed that it hadn't stopped him from seeking to become a nuance for our own means or nuisance Saito wrapped his fingers around the hilt of his sword before he could move, however, Nagakura interrupted. Saito, oh my, what can I do? I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the He's right. If it's just the two of you against Shiranui, then you'll. <laughs> Saito watched this interaction unfold silently, and he glanced between Nagakura and Harada. After a moment, he nodded in confirmation. Why do I feel like we're getting into the big boss battle? Am I gonna accidentally finish Hakuoki today? <laughs> that would kind of suck. <laughs> Without another word, Saito turned and sprinted in. I followed behind him as fast as my legs would take me. Saito, was it really okay for us to leave the two of them behind? Neither Nagakura nor Harada had ever drunk the water of life. They were both as human as could be. For the two of them to enter battle with a demon, let alone one as skilled with a gun, felt so reckless. <laughs> Saito's words were bestowed with an unbreakable trust, one that had been nurtured for years beside men with whom he had served the Shinsengumi faithfully. Within the castle's interior, it was hauntingly still. If the story told to us by the dying fury outside of the castle was true, then there should have been a dozens of Aizu soldiers and furies waiting to greet us inside. Why? Why is it so quiet? Didn't Nagakura say that this place was swarming with furies? Saito's voice trailed off as he wondered to himself, and a chill ran down my spine. Then, a startling surprise. 
a sliding door was flung open. What the heck was that noise? From behind the sliding door came... <laughs> a gang of feral furies screeched to signal their arrival, and they leapt feverishly into the room. Blah, 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 blah. <gasps> no, not now! In response, Saito changed into his fury form. Okay, hopefully it's just you turning into form and not having a hard time. Please. He unsheathed his sword, then he weaved so agilely between the furies, my eyes could barely keep up. Dang, that's a lot. Instead of a narrow hallway, Saito opt to lunge instead of swinging his sword, piercing limbs to disarm his foes. For Saito, it seemed to be no labor to move through such a cramped corridor, as he had been well versed in fighting in many of Kyoto's narrow passageways. Oh my goodness. There's so many. Why are there so many? A battle between furies meant that the Serum's enhancements were leveled. Only true swordsman skill would swordsmanship would could prevail. In the span of one breath, Saito had made quick work of each of the Furies, killing them with grace and ease. It's the father. This voice. It was. わざわざ我が娘をここまで連れてきてくれて感謝するよ。迎えに行く手間が省けたというものだ。あんたに合わせるために he does look kind of pretty with white hair and red eyes. <laughs> Jeez, now I have nine notifications. That's... Yeah, that's right. Don't give him an answer. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt him, but at the same time, I don't care. <laughs> Saito was hesitant to answer, given my father's cryptic tone, and he thinned his eyes in, an, in anticipation of whatever tricks father might have had up his sleeve. Might have had, yeah, might have had up his sleeve. However, it seemed father was posing this his question rhetorically, and his lips curled into a grin as he continued on. Huh. その力は人物からの授かりものでも何でもなく。これから先君が生きるための力を前倒しして使っているに過ぎ。So he's saying that every single time he activates his fury powers, he's taking years off his actual life. And that's why the guy faded away to ash? What? If what my father had said were true, then every time Saito activated his fury abilities, had it meant that he was sacrificing, sacrificing his remaining lifespan? Saito's brow furrowed slightly, as if he were perplexed by this sudden revelation, but then he muttered in a composed, hushed tone. The fury outside turned to ash without leaving a single trace of his remains behind. So was that because... when your lifespan has been completely depleted, there's nothing holding your body or your matter together? 
I'm gonna counteract this real quick. Um, people don't have a set lifespan. So, the fact of taking away years off of a set lifespan is kind of, um, kind of, um, you know, do you get my thought process? Like, <laughs> you shouldn't, they, they shouldn't have a set lifespan and die. Sorry, I kind of- I probably just ruined that mood. <laughs> then that meant Saito, having already drunk the water of life, will soon suffer the same fate? <笑><笑><笑> Father began cackling to himself manically, just as the despair began to sink in. Oh. Toto? A familiar voice called out from behind me. Toto! That voice, it was... Toto, what are you doing here? Hijikata-san we got the good boy! Toto laughed lightheartedly before shifting an angry glare over at my father. I love this boy. This is pure protagonist energy right here. In response, Saito's mouth twitched into a daring smile. Death was something both of the Shinsengumi men were intimately familiar with, making my father's attempts to cast doubt in their hearts all the more meaningless. I love these boys. Suddenly, Toro's hair became white. In one swift moment, Toto drew his sword and bolted rashly in father's direction before sliding the icy sharp blade across his ribcage. <laughs> However, father was unfazed as the gash left by Toto began to seal itself and the bloody viscera stopped. I love these boys. Toto's words were confident and decisive, and not a hint of doubt could be found in them. Saito nodded, and the two shared a wordless moment in which they acknowledged how much one of them meant to the other, a token of brotherly admiration. Oh, I love this. This is so cool. Atop of the large staircase was an enormous grand hall. Rows of ornately decorated tables and seats that were once host to an array of teeming guests, I imagined. In the place of the Daimo's chair, however, stood two tall, shadowy figures. Although there were only the two of them, their ghostly aura permeated the entire hall, causing my hair to raise chillingly all along the length of my arms. It was all but impossible to flinch. I had made one of the figures out to be uh, Kyuju Amaguri, who, upon recognizing me, grimaced irritably. Because I wanted to um, to um, boast and say I did the diddly-do with uh, Saito, so Kazuma can just frick off now. <laughs> 
Beside him stood Chikage Kasma, staring vacantly at us. What's obvious? No. No, Saito's gonna confess his undying love for me, and I'm gonna confess my undying love for him, and Kasa Kazuma, you can go for golf. He is so soft-spoken, it's hard for me to even hear him. Cosmos taunts were met with no reaction. Cosmos taunts were met with no reaction from Saito, who continued to glare coldly at the demon. <laughs> You're funny. Ooh, confident Saito, let's go. Kazuma's chortled, chortled, in amusement from Saito's challenge. これはいい。俺を倒しその娘を守ると来たか。飛ばし身の戦の時のことを忘れてはいまいな。この俺に手も足もでずぼろ切れのようになって。落ち水を飲みようやく<笑> あすれたのか。貴様 Saito's demeanor was unwavering, and his refusal to give in to Kasuma's crude verbal provoc pro provocations, pro provocations, frickin' Honor of love. <laughs> Who, whom do you claim to serve with such honor? Hmm, um, that would be <coughs> me. Nah. <laughs> Saito exercised control as he spoke. As if an intense azure flame was being stoked fervently in his eyes. <laughs> in an instant, Saito's hair turned white. Oh my goodness. Amaguri, Kazuma's victory may have seemed like a foregone conclusion, so Amaguri put up little resistance and scoffed as he leaned his back against the wall. Saito. <sighs> the way that he said that, this man will do neither of us any harm. Ah, oh, I love this man. I had to believe in Saito. I had to. So, I did as he requested, and I rested my back tensively against the wall. Or tensely against the wall. Then, Saito unsheathed his sword. Their blade, or their battle had begun. Saito kicked at the ground, hoping to land a critical blow upon Kazuma's exposed neck. Kazuma effortlessly smacked at Saito's blade to parry the strike, and the two swords were fiercely locked. However, 
Saito, it seemed, was the stronger of the two. The blade trembled in Kazuma's hands, and he persisted by hoping to push Saito back. By then, however, Saito had released the tension, and the two stepped back. Kazuma and Saito stood at odds with one another. To Kazuma's surprise, Saito unsheathed a second sword and lunged at him from his side profile. Kazuma raised his sword to deflect the blow, but Saito edged him in speed by a fraction of a second. Every moment mattered, and Saito aimed a precise strike to knock Kazuma's sword out from his hands. <laughs> Kazuma shrieked wildly in disbelief, and he scurried a little distance over to where his sword had fallen. Then... <gasps> Saito stabbed the tip of his blade into Kazuma's hand as it reached frantically for the sword's hilt, and I heard an eerie crunch as Saito dug the teeth deeper into the flesh. <gasps> Drops of crimson blood stained the castle floor. Thick streams began to trickle in the shape of a web. Kazuma's face scrunched as he grabbed a hold of Saito's blade and pulled it recklessly from his maimed hand. Because of his regenerative powers, Kazuma's hand was sure to heal any moment now, but... Hatred seethed behind Kazuma's lucid eyes, his composure waning steadily as he barked at Saito. I flinched when Kasuma began screaming at the top of his lungs. It was fear incarnate. Then Kasuma began to transform into a true demon with golden eyes and stark white hair. It was deity like an unimaginable sight. <laughs> I could have sworn we've seen it before, but oh well. All of a sudden, Kazuma's composure was restored, and when he spoke, his voice echoed like a temple bell, resonating in a low tone felt deeply in my chest. Saito assumed an offensive stance and then leapt from the ground to rush at Kazuma. But something confounding had happened. Kazuma, who only moments beforehand was standing right in front of Saito, vanished without a trace. Or did he? Rather, Kazuma had achieved superhuman speed, which accelerated his movements beyond what my eyes were able to follow. I shuddered to think what Kazuma was capable of if he were to shift his focus from dodging to attacking. Just as I, just as I had been contemplating the worst, a blinding flash cut through the air. As my vision was, was restored, my fears had been realized. <gasps> no, Saito! Blood spurted from a fresh wound in Saito's chest. Saito! I had no time to react, let alone see what happened. I hadn't seen where the source of his wound came from, but then all of a sudden, another bloody gosh, gash appeared on Saito's arm. Thick deluge, del deluges of blood trickled from Saito's exposed flesh, gathering into a pool underneath his drenched body. <laughs> no, Saito, baby, no! Saito began to cough blood violently from his mouth. Although his fury powers would have normally healed these lacerations shortly after they'd been inflicted. Oh no, that's a lot. Kazuma was ruthless. He swung again and again from the shadows, giving Saito no chance to defend himself. Oh shoot, that's a lot. <laughs> Jeez, 
チーソムス。貴様がおちみずを飲んでまで手に入れた力はどうしたのだ。早く川わさぬと違うせて動けなくなってしまうぞ。ミミズイカの哀れな生き物よ。Even with his enhanced strength and speed, Saito proved to be little match against Kazuma's current state. The Grand Hall, once immaculate and lavish, had now been covered by gruesome splatterings of Saito's blood. No. It was a traumatizing sight, and I couldn't help but cover my eyes in horror. Saito's legs wobbled underneath him as he struggled to endure the grueling pain. It was a pain that I could not begin to fathom. <laughs> Saito coughed violently once more. In an attempt to support his body, which was under the verge of collapse, he stuck his sword into the ground. Kazuma walked behind Saito and grabbed him by his blood soaked hair, forcing him to look up. Also, grabbing someone by the hair in, in a battle stance kind of kind of kind of nice. I kind of like that in a battle scene. <laughs> Saito drew haggard breaths, but his eyes were fixed right on Kazuma's sheathing glare. Heck no. Spit blood in his face, spit blood in his face. <laughs> Saito's growing. My baby. An unexpected answer to Kazuma, whose eye twitched in response. And then. Kazuma began viciously beating Saito's head into the bloodstained floor, viciously like a tama drum. Then Kazuma stomped his foot upon the head of Saito as he wailed bitterly. Is this a chance for us to sneak up behind him and kill him? Stop. I couldn't stop my body from shaking as I witnessed Kazuma brutally attacking Saito. Stop! Refusing to watch any longer, I reached my hand for my Kodachi when. You! Amaguri brushed off his shoulder and quietly approached Kazuma before throwing a fist at him. Why? What? Amaguri then looked over at Saito, who was laying in a shallow pool of his own blood. Saito! I'm a gray? Saito squirmed for a brief moment, then he slowly tried raising himself up. Oh, shoot. An ominous shadow side sidled closely behind Amaguri. Oh. 
この俺を裏切ってまがいものごときに手を貸しようだぜ Kazuma struck, snuck up on Amaguri and struck him from behind, causing Amaguri to kneel over the floor in pain. You're horrible! W wasn't Amaguri one of his friends? Kazuma had no visible reaction to my outburst. His aura had changed from earlier. All of the indignance from earlier had dissipated, and he fell silent. Kazuma's appearance became ghastly. Then, All of it was flipped on its head. The glow of his golden, demonic eyes shined above Saito, who had mustered enough strength to stand. Saito! I bit into my lips and I stepped back as I was told. I wanted nothing more than to fight alongside him. But I had to accept the truth that doing so would only serve as a burden to him, so I, have been in an, so I was in a bit of a conundrum. Kazuma and Saito glared at one another, and the air around us was thick with an electrifying tension. For Saito, timing was everything, and all it took was one crucial swing, and victory was his. My knees shook as the tension reached its peak. Kazuma, assuming his battle ready stance, had broken from his stoic gaze into a malicious smirk. And then, <laughs> the wind pushed back my hair from the force of Kazuma's swing, which Saito had thankfully dodged. However, Kazuma had anticipated Saito evading his strike, and the demon spun his body around and swung his blade with all of his might at Saito. Saito! <laughs> Saito had been flung against the wall, kicking up a cloud of dust as he landed. A coughing fit followed soon after, but Saito raised himself back up like it was nothing. Kazuma, however, gave Saito no chance to gather himself, kicking at the ground to lunge for Saito. Jeez! <laughs> Saito weaved around Kazuma, trying to hit at Kazuma from all angles, but Kazuma peered through, parried each strike without exerting any effort. The metallic hiss of their blades clashing stung my ears, and I watched Saito struggle to find an opportunity to strike as Kazuma easily neutralized each attack. Our chances for victory dwindled with each moment. I nervously wrapped my fingers around my kodachi. All I needed is a second, or all I need. All I do need is a second. I was under no delusion that I could cause any harm to Kazuma, but if I could successfully distract him, then maybe it would be enough for Saito to get the better of him. I took in a deep breath, clenching my fist when. Oi, oi, Saito! What are you Each of them were filthy, covered in thick layers of blood, sweat, and dust. The results, I imagined, of their hard fought battles. <laughs> Toto leapt from the floor, racing towards Kasuma with the zeal of a wild animal. Before Kazuma had a chance to finish his thought. <laughs> Nakakura darted behind Kazuma and put all of his weight into swinging his sword against Kazuma's exposed back. Kazuma turned around to aim a retali. Re. Retaliatory swing at Nagakura, but 
今日こそてめえらにインドを渡してやるぜ Next came Harada, rapidly charging forward with a spear, which was aimed right for Kazuma's heart. Saito, <laughs> Saito seized his sword, and he hopped in front of where Kazuma had been standing. Suddenly, all was still. A suffocating tension gripped everyone in the hall. Just then... A flickering sheen followed the path of Saito's polished sword, moving faster than the blink of an eye. Look at this sheen. By the time I had realized what had happened, a gaping wound was cut across Kazuma's abdomen. Saito stood tall, his blade unblemished by Kazuma's blood. He had performed a perfect EI to the point that his blade had seemed to everyone invisible. Was Saito really able to land the perfect strike on Kasuma? For whatever reason, time was moving excruciating, excruciatingly slow, and a silent tension still permeated the air. And then... A blood-curdling screech bellowed throughout the hall. Oh, shriek, my bad. Kasuma fell to the ground, still as a rock. I would stab him like 10,000 more times to make sure. Everyone's fatigue was starting to set. Doubly. So poor Nagakura, who spared no moment dropping to his knees. Saito, on the other hand, still stood with his sword firmly and grasped, and he walked towards Kazuma. Kazuma's body had returned to its original form. As Saito sauntered quietly towards the fallen demon, it was Amaguri who'd reached the body before Saito did. Amaguri crouched down, inspecting Kasuma's bloody body to verify whether or not he'd truly been killed. And then, Amaguri stood up, and he shook his head silently. Saito. <laughs> Saito nodded stoically in return. ひみに伝えなければならないことがあります。伝えなければならないこと。行動はこの地で落ち水の最後の実験を行おうとしていました。羅刹の毒を和らげ、少しでも死期を遅らせられるように。無つの清らかな水には落ち水の毒を抑える
武士の武という字は矛を止めると書くのですか Amaguri's eyes were thin and relaxed, and his lips form a peaceful smile. Then, without another word, Amaguri left us. <laughs> After our conversation, each of us scattered throughout the castle's corridors, releasing Aizu soldiers who'd been captured by the demons before we left at dawn. On our way out, We were welcomed by a serene and clear sky. My skin felt pleasantly cool in the fresh air. Saito, are you okay?、Uh, how are you feeling in the sun? How about you, Toto? Aww, I see. I totally accidentally finished this today. <laughs> I love these three. だよ。俺だって武士なんだから矛を止める方法を考えるのか仕事だろ。争いを生まねえ方法か。やっぱめちゃくちゃ強くなるしかねえんじゃねえ。こいつと争っても<笑><笑> <laughs> Nagakura jokingly wrapped his arm around Toto's neck, then dug his knuckles into Toto's scalp. そんじゃ俺、急いで土方さんの後を追っかけなきゃなんねえから、もう行くよ。どこまで走れるかわかんねえけど。ここまで来たらとことん戦ってみる。お、気をつけてな。ブザマの死に方しやがったら、後の世ま
お前実は影武者か何かかい<笑> Oh, he's so cute and he's being teased! I love it! I love this man! After becoming flustered by Nagakura's taunts, Saito quietly crept his hand downward to reach for the sword sitting on his right hip. <laughs> He's not being serious. Goodness gravy. I love that. Please be safe, you guys. Farewell. Eventually, the two of them disappeared in the distance. Just like when we saw, saw them off in Edo, the backs of Nagakura and Harada became smaller, shrinking into the horizon to wherever their path was taking them. <laughs> Saito, are you okay? Hey, why don't we take a minute to rest here? The sun's out after all. You've just fought in the battle of your life. For once, take some time to think for yourself. <laughs> Saito found a shady spot underneath a lush tree. <laughs> I know. Similar to af after the Battle of Tobushimi, we were left with the difficult task of biting our dear friends or bidding our dear friends farewell. Look at that. It's so pretty. Same here, Saito. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. It didn't sadden me to think that I may never. S I'm not gonna re-say that. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. S I'd be lying if I said it didn't sadden me to think that I may never see everyone from the Shinsengumi again. But it was inevitable that all of our paths would diverge someday. What mattered most was that our futures were determined by our own will. Our only choice was to live honestly and with conviction. There was no chance to look back or falter or give to any urge to let ourselves become consumed by our doubts. We must be strong. I love this. Ah, oh, indeed. Ah, oh, indeed. Oh. Hakoki Edo Blossoms. I accidentally finished it. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Look at our baby. Ah, oh, so cute. So pretty. Yep. <laughs> Gosh dang it! Uh, let me... Oh, what happened? What happened? What happened? Oh. Oh! Final chapter? I was gonna turn up the music because I thought it was going to... have a thingy. Okay. So, uh, apparently I didn't finish it. Okay, so I didn't finish it. I'm going to leave off this chapter for next weekend. Okay, I'm going to leave it off for next weekend because I don't think I'd be able to deal with it. <laughs> deal with finishing it today without, like, proper organization. And also, I now have 31 notifications, and that is very much worrying me. So. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my goodness. I'm just going to go click through these. I'm not going to say anything about them. But oh my goodness, you guys. What the heck was that? We got two kisses. Freaking two kisses. We got like uh he drank our blood like two times. So my worry for us um oh, overly giving him too much blood was probably not a worry at all. But I don't know. I still feel like I have to worry about that. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I know, right? It's so good. <laughs> it makes me wonder how they did it with the like anime. Like what route did they take? Cuz I know in Kamigami no Asobi, um they went with um not specifically Loki's path, but they took like an altered path of like Loki and Baldur's thingy. So I'm I'm so curious what they do in the anime. I wonder if they go for Toshi or like have like a set um merged path kind of thing. If you get what I mean? I I don't know. Oh my goodness, that boss battle. And then Amaguri coming in clutch, man. And like the brothers coming in secondary clutch like oh my goodness. <laughs> what the heck? And like that like soldier suddenly turning into ash and then finding out that the um water of life takes away your years like my freaking goodness what the heck i love this i love this oh my goodness like i i i don't know what to say I think this has become another fave game of mine. Like, I love this storytelling. It is absolutely amazing and just... I don't know how to feel. I really don't know how to feel. <laughs> this is so amazing. I love it. Okay, there's still a little bit more. Uh, wh what, were, what were some... Oh, oops. Oh, no, I'm still good. What were some of your favorite parts? Uh, I think my p favorite part was probably, um, the handhold scene. The, like, handhold slowly looking up at the stars kind of scene. I love that scene. That, the imagery was so strong in my head. Like, ugh. Just, ugh. Okay, it looks like we got... All of the encyclopedia stuff. Let's check our warrior record. Full bloom. Oh geez, we were low on corruption too. <gasps> yes. Oh, that's so good. So I love it. I love him. I love this game. I love everything about this. There's there's like no question. No question whatsoever. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So many twists. Yes. So, excuse me. So many twists. All good ones. Yep. All good ones. I'm like, last weekend's stream, we were having like a bunch of like bad twists and everything. I was like, oh good. This isn't, this isn't going well. And then we, we died and then I had to redo stuff. So, but like this time, everything, my options were perfect. Just, ah. <laughs> Ah, we got two kisses. We got him suckling on our earlobe. <laughs> oh my goodness, I loved it. I can't wait to finish it properly next weekend. Oh my goodness. Uh, if I didn't have a stream tomorrow, I'd want to stream this and finish it tomorrow. But I already got something planned. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I can't get over this. I love this. I love Saito. I love the like character arc that we've gone through and how much he's progressed. <gasps> okay. Okay, I should probably stop. I should probably stop gushing about this game. Okay. <sighs> Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. It was so amazing. I love it. <laughs> Yo, nice. Yep. Heartfelt badass. The whole ending where the trio comes in clutch. You like that part? Yeah. That was nice. Oh, loved it. 
So tomorrow we have a stream. We are going to be streaming Ghost of Tsushima at 3 p.m. EST or 12 p.m. PST or on um, technically Monday, 4 a.m. JST. So we got that one, which is going to be different from uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, which I I've mentioned what it was about um, in last night's stream. But yeah, you know what? You you'll, you'll, you'll see it tomorrow. You'll see it tomorrow and in all its gloriness and prettiness because it also has a photo mode just like uh, ghostwire so <laughs> i'll try to take some pictures even though it's through my ps4 i'll try to take some pictures and use them for thumbnails later on like what i did with um ghostwire how i took pictures and changed all the thumbnails <laughs> so i hope to see you all tomorrow hopefully we get to enjoy that one as well um I'm going to stream Hakuoki next weekend. We're going to finish it. Um, we're going to have a, a collab once again next weekend, hopefully. Um, hopefully. We're thinking on making it a weekly thing, so I'm hoping that it's going to be a clear set in stone thing. I don't know if we're going to do Overcooked again. We might. I'm not 100% sure. We might do something else, like spice it up a little bit. I don't know. So we got the collab, and then we're going to do, we're going to finish Hakuoki next weekend and then we're going to play some most uh more ghost of tsushima but we have to start it <laughs> we have to start it first and that's tomorrow oh, thank you so much for coming thank you for watching thank you for enjoying this game with me i absolutely love it to bits i did not mean to do that oh i can't wait thank you so much i love you all and i hope you have a wonderful night or day depending on your time zone and i hope to see you tomorrow Take care. Bye-bye.